As hard as it is to believe, 2023 is almost behind us. And if you tuned into our compilation earlier this week, you'll know that we're marking the occasion by taking a look back at some of the strangest crime stories we covered this year. Today's video is going to be focusing exclusively on stories from our Crimes of the Week International series. Just a heads up, because this is a compilation style video, keep in mind that these segments have not been edited since they first appeared on their respective lists. So references to specific days of the week as well as other small details may no longer apply. If you missed the video from earlier this week, we've included a link to that one in the description below. Also, we just wanted to give a quick thanks to every single one of you out there tuning in. You've all helped to make 2023 another unforgettable year, and we're eternally grateful for all the support you've sent our way in all its forms. Have a safe and happy new year, and here's to an even better 2024. Representatives from Egypt's Public Prosecution Office say that a trio of would-be thieves are in custody this week after they were allegedly caught red-handed pillaging an ancient historical site and were trying to make off with a rather ambitious haul. The incident took place sometime recently, just outside the city of Aswan. Located about 425 miles south of the capital of Cairo, Aswan is reportedly home to some of the country's most prized archaeological sites. Unfortunately, this means that along with tourists, the city attracts its fair share of looters as well. According to reports, the three alleged thieves in this case set their sights fairly high. Police say that when they found them, they had snuck into an ancient quarry and were planning to steal an entire statue of Pharaoh Ramses II. The statue weighed an estimated 10 metric tons. As you might imagine, stealing a statue of this weight and size wasn't the most subtle operation. Authorities say that in order to actually lift it, the suspects had brought a crane with them. The men were arrested at the site in possession of the crane, as well as manual digging tools which they allegedly planned to use to further illegally excavate the area. At the time of this recording, it's unclear what charges the trio could be facing. Authorities say that they are still investigating the situation, and that they may have already found video evidence of other similar crimes on the suspect's cell phones. Police also say that they are looking into whether more people might have been involved in this particular operation. Authorities in the Chinese city of Shanghai say that a 28-year-old man is in custody this week after he got into a fight with staff at a high-end hotel and apparently decided to get revenge by driving through the lobby with his car. The incident took place sometime in the late morning hours of January 10th at the Jinling Purple Mountain Hotel Shanghai, located in the city's Pudong district. It began when the suspect, a 28-year-old man identified only by the name Chen, got into a heated argument with several of the building's employees. According to reports, Chen had been staying at the hotel, but at some point had become upset over a missing laptop, which he claimed had been stolen. The full circumstances of what happened aren't exactly clear, but in some reports we came across, hotel staff claimed that the computer was later found outside. Regardless, it appears that the situation was not handled to Chen's satisfaction, so much so that after his argument with the hotel's employees that morning, the 28-year-old apparently decided he would settle the score in a dramatic and highly illegal fashion. After jumping behind the wheel of his white sports car, Chen allegedly smashed his way through the glass front doors of the hotel. He then proceeded to drive erratically around the lobby, crashing into and destroying anything that got in his way. The whole thing finally came to an end when the 28-year-old reportedly drove back towards the hotel entrance, presumably in an attempt to get back outside the same way he had come in. However, this time, he hit a door frame and got stuck, at which point he was apparently surrounded by hotel staff and other terrified onlookers who screamed at him to get out of the car. He was eventually arrested at the scene by police. At the time of this recording, it's unclear whether Chen has yet been formally charged or what charges he could be facing. He reportedly remains in police custody.
A would-be Indonesian burglar was apparently left embarrassed and empty-handed this week after he tried to break into a local business only to realize that he had made a big mistake. According to reports, the incident took place in the early morning hours of January 8th in the popular Bali resort village of Kangu. It began when the suspect, an unidentified man dressed all in black, apparently decided to try and force his way inside a local cell phone store. After realizing he could squeeze his way through a narrow gap in the rolling metal security shutters to get inside, the man did just that. Unfortunately, he had barely made it halfway in before realizing that the business was not actually unoccupied. The owner was actually sitting right at the front desk, leading to a rather awkward encounter. It was at this point that the suspect seemingly thought twice about what he was doing and embarrassingly saw himself out the same way he had come in, all while the startled business owner tried to ask him what the hell he thought he was doing. Honestly, it's really way better if you just see the whole thing for yourself. I don't know about you, but I could feel the tension in the room there. While it's unclear if police are currently searching for this suspect since he never actually followed through with the burglary, if nothing else, hopefully this bonehead learned a thing or two and won't try this again anytime soon. Authorities in the English county of Hampshire say that two men have been sentenced this week after they, quote, idiotically broke into a zoo and distressed several of the animals there before posting footage of their crime to social media. According to reports, the incident took place nearly two years ago on February 15, 2021, when 24-year-old Bradley Green and 21-year-old Nathan Daniels decided to travel to the Marwell Zoo, even though it was closed to the public because of a pandemic lockdown. After arriving at the facility, prosecutors say that they cut a fence at the exterior of the property in order to gain access. Once inside the zoo, the pair of men reportedly engaged in senseless acts of vandalism that both damaged enclosures and frightened several of the animals. Police apparently later found a plastic bottle, sticks, and stones that had been thrown into the tiger enclosure, a life preserver which had been hurled into the penguin enclosure, and a plastic bottle and bucket in the giraffe enclosure. While all of the animals affected showed signs of distress after the break-in was uncovered, it appears that the giraffes got the worst of it. After breaking a door that led to their enclosure, Green reportedly threw a bottle at one of the animals, hitting it in the neck. The men not only filmed themselves doing this, but when it was later brought up in court, Green claimed he had done it to, quote, get the giraffe's attention. This same footage, along with others that Green and Daniels took and posted to Snapchat, was reportedly seen by concerned members of the public, who tipped off police. After pleading guilty to several charges related to the 2021 incident, this week, Green and Daniels were each sentenced to a 12-month community order with 120 hours of unpaid work. They were also each ordered to pay 750 pounds, or about $930 US, in compensation to the Marwell Zoo. Authorities in the Ecuadorian port city of Guayaquil say that a local man is facing serious charges after he set his own truck on fire in the middle of a busy street and threatened police officers when he was pulled over for a series of traffic offenses. The incident took place sometime this week when the unidentified suspect was pulled over driving a red 1977 Datsun truck on Macala Avenue, an arterial road in the city's east. According to police, it was pretty obvious that the man was breaking the law. His vehicle was pretty much a traffic violation on wheels. Not only was the truck missing a rear license plate, the thing had apparently failed previous safety inspections and hadn't even been registered since 2014. The man also didn't have a driver's license. Though the man likely had to know that he was already facing some hefty fines as well as the confiscation of his vehicle, he had a different idea upon being pulled over. That idea can perhaps best be summed up as, if I can't have the truck, no one can. 
After stepping out of the vehicle, the suspect allegedly grabbed a container of gasoline and in full view of police, started to liberally slosh it onto the truck's hood and into its interior. He then took a few steps back, struck a match, and threw it. The vehicle quickly erupted into flames. According to reports, up to and including this point, it appears that most onlookers were actually on the suspect's side. As witnesses filmed the incident, quite a few people could even be heard actively egging the man on, shouting things like, burn it, burn it, and put it on fire. However, it turned out that the suspect wasn't done just quite yet. With his container of gasoline still in hand, he started trying to douse the officers who pulled him over, allegedly threatening to burn them alive. This is when the crowd reportedly started to turn on the man, and he was taken into custody. While it's unclear exactly what kind of penalties the suspect is now looking at, it's safe to say that they will likely be much more severe than a few traffic fines. At the time of this recording, the man reportedly remains in police custody. Authorities in the Indian state of Tamil Nadu say that a 25-year-old wannabe action star found out the hard way that movies aren't like real life this week when he was arrested while allegedly trying to rob a bank after being inspired by a recent film. The whole thing started earlier this month with the release of a Tamil language film called Tunavu. The movie, whose title roughly translates to Fortitude in English, stars celebrated Indian actor Ajit Kumar and is reportedly an action thriller about competing gangsters embroiled in a deadly rivalry over high-stakes bank robberies. While Tunavu does admittedly sound quite interesting from what we've read online, according to police, it had a particularly large impact on 25-year-old Khalil Rahman. So much so that less than two weeks after seeing the movie, he apparently decided to try a bank robbery of his own. On the morning of January 24th, Rahman reportedly showed up at his local branch of the Indian Overseas Bank in the city of Dindigal, as staff were preparing to open for the day. Armed with nothing but pepper spray and a couple handfuls of chili powder, he managed to overpower the three employees who were there, before allegedly tying them up with some plastic bags. Unfortunately for Rahman, he wasn't quite as proficient with immobilizing bank employees as his big screen heroes. While he was fumbling around in the back of the business trying to loot the place, one of the staff members managed to break free and promptly ran outside to call for help. Concerned members of the public ran inside, and without the element of surprise, it turned out that Ramon's homemade pepper spray and chili powder weren't all that effective. He was held by the Good Samaritans until police arrived to place him under arrest. While it's unclear whether Ramon has yet been formally charged over the incident, Police say that he was motivated by general frustration with his life. Representatives from the Philippines National Police Force say that a pair of vloggers were arrested last week after they pulled a strange and stupid prank that wasted valuable police resources. According to reports, the incident took place sometime on January 18th in the municipality of Moab, in the southern province of Davao de Oro. It began when the two content creators, later identified as Jonel Cordero and Arnold Rabi, showed up at a local Green Planet gas station. The pair proceeded to purchase a small amount of gasoline, which they filled into a plastic soda bottle. After getting into place, Arnold reportedly began to film as Jonel appeared to chug the entire container of gasoline in full view of stunned onlookers. He then began to stumble around, fainting several times and vomiting. Understandably disturbed by what they thought they were witnessing, concerned bystanders called the town's Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office for help. They showed up alongside police, expecting to deal with a serious poisoning case. However, when emergency workers approached Jonel to administer first aid, he suddenly burst out laughing. That was when he informed everyone present that they had been pranked. It turned out that the liquid that Jonel had been seen drinking wasn't gasoline. At the last second, he had swapped it out for an energy drink that was approximately the same color and had been held in a different bottle. 
The whole thing had allegedly been planned by Jonell and Arnold to get views on social media. Hilarious, right? Yeah, apparently police didn't think so. After sharing some choice words with the men about what they thought about their stunt, they promptly placed them under arrest. According to reports, the two vloggers have each now been charged with causing alarm and scandal. If convicted, they could be punished with up to 30 days in jail and a fine of 40,000 pesos, or about $735 US. Authorities in the Malaysian state of Negri Sembilan say that a bumbling would-be burglar is in police custody this week after he allegedly had way too much to drink while on the job, so to speak, and ended up falling asleep in a house he had broken into. According to reports, the incident began at around 6 a.m. on January 23rd when a 66-year-old man in the town of Bahau named Sin Kong Men awoke to find a stranger passed out in the middle of the floor in one of the rooms of his house. At first, Sin assumed that the guy was a friend of one of his adult children who had simply stayed the night. Kind of weird, but still not out of the realm of possibility. However, when Sin started to look around a bit, he started to notice some things that were amiss. It looked like someone had raided his liquor cabinet, and there was also a random black dog inside his home that didn't belong to him. When Sin looked at the stranger again, he noticed that there was a paper bag lying next to him as well. It contained two knife blades, a screwdriver, a Samsung tablet, and two more bottles of liquor. Sin recognized the items because all of them belonged to him. That's when he realized that he had been the victim of possibly the world's strangest attempted burglary. It's now alleged that the previous night, the suspect, identified only as a 41-year-old man, had climbed over Sin's fence and came inside through an unlocked door. While in the process of gathering up items he intended to steal, he apparently discovered the family's liquor cabinet and got a little too carried away. Oh yeah, and for some reason, he brought his dog with him for the burglary. After discovering the man on the floor that morning, one by one, Sin and all of the family members in his house tried to shake the 41-year-old awake, to no avail. Even the little dog apparently tried to nudge him out of unconsciousness. However, it was clear that he was still quite drunk from the previous night's escapades. The man was finally awoken by police, who took him to the station for further questioning. At the time of this recording, authorities say that the 41-year-old remains in custody. He is now facing trespassing charges, which are reportedly punishable by up to five years in prison. Authorities in Japan's Aomori Prefecture say that a 58-year-old office worker was recently forced to channel his inner action movie star when he was assaulted by an armed attacker and had only an umbrella to defend himself. According to reports, the incident took place at around 2.50 p.m. on January 12th, when the 58-year-old victim was walking along a street in the city of Hachinohe, near his home. He was minding his own business, when out of nowhere, he was allegedly approached by a man holding a sickle with a six-inch blade. Completely unprompted, the sickle-wielding man attacked. Thanks to some quick thinking and even quicker reflexes, the 58-year-old man was able to defend himself with the only thing he had on him, his umbrella. Reports state that he successfully deflected at least 10 of the attacker's blows, likely saving himself from serious injury or death until police were able to arrive at the scene and place the suspect under arrest. While the attacker allegedly admitted to what he had done after being taken into custody, police say that they are no closer to establishing any kind of motive. The victim and the suspect apparently had no connection prior to the incident. Authorities in the Taiwanese city of Tainan say that a local man was recently slapped with a hefty fine and sentenced to prison time after his pet parrot injured a doctor and his negligence was found to be the cause of the situation. The whole thing started sometime on the evening of July 13th, 2020, when the pet owner, identified only by the last name Huang, released his macaw parrot for a fly around in the city's Gairan district. Authorities say that Huang let the bird go without taking any precautions, 
and when he did, the animal, which is almost 16 inches tall and has a wingspan of nearly two feet, made a beeline for another man who was out for a jog. The man, a doctor by the last name of Lynn, was apparently startled when the macaw swooped up to him from behind and landed on his back. The doctor panicked, and in the resulting commotion was scratched by the animal in the back of the head before he fell to the ground. He dislocated his hip and fractured his pelvis as a result of the fall. According to reports, because of Lin's injuries, he was unable to work for several months. He ended up suing Huang for damages over the bizarre parrot encounter, and the case not only became a civil matter, but a criminal one as well. The case was finally resolved recently when a judge ruled that the doctor's fall was the result of negligence on Huang's part. He said that the size of Huang's parrot qualified it as a large animal and that he should have taken protective measures. The pet owner was slapped with a fine of 3.04 million New Taiwan dollars, or roughly $102,000 US. He was also sentenced to two months in prison on charges of causing unintentional injuries. Huang says that he plans to appeal the ruling, saying that his macaw was not aggressive and that the compensation is too high. Authorities in the English town of South Shields say that they are investigating a rather gross mystery this week after a local nursery has repeatedly been dumped with hundreds of used diapers that do not belong to them. A case which has jokingly been called a quote, a real poo done it. The whole thing started near the end of November of last year when Ashfield nursery manager Rebecca Pearson arrived at work to find a stinky surprise. More specifically, 20 bags filled with used diapers and personal protective equipment, which had been dumped right outside the nursery's gates. According to Rebecca, while moving the waste was time-consuming and gross, that wasn't really the point. Her nursery pays substantial fees to have their own used diapers hauled away, meaning that whoever had done this was deliberately adding to the business's costs. And since they had been dumped on the nursery's property, she couldn't simply leave them there. For one thing, it wouldn't have been a great look to the parents who leave their kids there, and second, she could have been slapped with a fine. Unfortunately, this wasn't a one-time thing either. So far, Rebecca says Ashfield has been hit six times by the unknown culprits, and on each occasion, they dump 20 to 40 bags containing upwards of 800 used diapers. Considering the sheer number of diapers at this point, Rebecca says that she suspects the person or people responsible belong to a rival childcare facility that doesn't want to pay the hefty fees for proper and legal waste disposal like Ashfield does. So instead, they're maliciously passing on the costs. While all of this is annoying enough already, Rebecca claims that recently things have taken a more concerning turn. She says that instead of simply dumping their garbage, the culprits have now taken to pulling Ashfield's wastes from their bins and throwing them around the property as well. This week, Rebecca reportedly caught an unknown man in the act. However, he was wearing a hoodie and took off running upon realizing he'd been discovered. Rebecca says that she now worries about her staff and that something else might happen given the bizarre and seemingly senseless escalation. At the time of this recording, police are investigating the incident and say that they have identified a single suspect. However, that person's name has yet to be released. It appears that Easter just couldn't come soon enough this year for one hapless criminal, as representatives from England's West Mercia police say that they busted him in connection with a bizarre holiday-themed heist. According to reports, the incident began sometime on February 11th when 32-year-old Joby Poole showed up at an industrial site in the town of Telford, owned by a company called SW Logistics. Poole was behind the wheel of a stolen semi-truck, and after gaining access to the facility by cutting a chain lock with a metal grinder, proceeded to hitch the vehicle to a trailer. That trailer was apparently loaded with a number of chocolate goodies, among them 200,000 Cadbury cream eggs. Police say that Poole fled the facility with the trailer and eventually reached the northbound M42 highway 
before they managed to catch up with him. When they did, he reportedly knew the jig was up and pulled over and surrendered right away. Apparently, the 32-year-old has already pleaded guilty to two counts of theft and a count of criminal damage in connection with the incident as well. While police haven't said exactly what motivated Poole to steal the cream eggs, they say that they believe that the trailer was specifically targeted. They have also stated that the 32-year-old has been involved in prior stolen goods cases. We think it's way more fun, though, if you imagine that Poole just couldn't handle the idea that the cream eggs are only available for a limited time each year, and that all 200,000 were for his personal stash. Also, in case you're wondering, authorities estimate the retail value of the chocolate eggs to be between 30,000 and 40,000 pounds, or about 36,000 and 48,000 dollars US. According to reports, Poole is due to be sentenced next month and is likely looking at about two years in prison. It might seem kind of excessive, but you've got to admit, it was a pretty extravagant crime. Officials at a prison in the South American country of Bolivia say that an inmate is facing additional charges after he recently tried to pull the wool over their eyes by dressing up as a sheep in a failed bid to escape the facility. According to reports, the whole thing went down on a cold, rainy night sometime last month when Jose Diaz, also known by the nickname El Araña or the Spider, managed to get out of his cell at the maximum security Chonchocoro prison, where he is serving a 15-year sentence for murder. After dressing in dark clothing and wrapping himself in a sheepskin, Diaz was able to make his way into the prison yard, where he got down on his hands and knees and crawled, doing his best impression of a farm animal. He reportedly hoped that the inclement weather would also help to sell the illusion. Unbelievably, it appears that at least for a little while, Diaz was able to avoid prison security. It wasn't until they noticed that he was missing from his cell that they went out into the yard and began to search for him, where they hilariously found his wool-covered body skulking through the grass. And Diaz was then restrained and taken back into the prison. Unfortunately for the real-life wolf in sheep's clothing, it seems that his stunt is going to cost him. Prison officials say that multiple disciplinary actions have been taken against him in the aftermath and that new charges will be added to his sentence. If you ask us, all in all, the whole thing seemed like a pretty bad idea. If you're one of those that celebrates Valentine's Day, then for you, this is probably the time of year that you associate with grand romantic gestures. Maybe you're a flowers and chocolate kind of person. Maybe you appreciate a simple but heartfelt card. Or maybe you're going even further and are thinking about asking that special someone to marry you. Whatever your experience, we're going to guess that it was nothing like the situation experienced by a young woman in Japan recently, whose wannabe Valentine expressed his romantic interest by taking a sh** on her bicycle seat. According to reports, the situation took place recently in Fukushima Prefecture when the teenage victim parked her bicycle outside of a subway station in the city of Soma. She ended up leaving it there overnight, a common practice. However, when she returned the next morning at around 7.30, there was a nasty surprise waiting for her. In short, someone had pooped on top of her bicycle seat. Weirdly, reports specify that the poop was not placed or smeared on the seat, but it looked as though the person responsible had actually gone directly onto the seat. Understandably disgusted, the woman reported what had happened to police, who launched an investigation. They were quickly able to track down the alleged perpetrator, an unidentified 28-year-old man from neighboring Miyagi Prefecture. When police located the man, he apparently offered this explanation. He said that he was attracted to the victim, so he decided to target her bike. Of course, in our opinion, this really just leaves more questions than answers. Perhaps the most pressing of which is, how was the victim supposed to know what the poop was supposed to mean? Was it like in the shape of a heart or something? 
In any case, police say that the 28-year-old was arrested on suspicion of vandalism. Hopefully he learned a thing or two from the experience, because if not, I can't imagine his Easter gifts will be any less disgusting. If you didn't get your fill of Japanese toilet-related crime in the main edition of this week's international video, well then, you're in luck. It just so happens that we found another similarly bizarre story, only this time someone figuratively lost their shit instead of literally. Authorities in Japan's Chiba Prefecture say that a 21-year-old man is facing charges this week after he assaulted another man and robbed him because he took too long in the bathroom. The incident took place at around 12.40 a.m. on February 18th at a convenience store in the city of Funabashi. According to reports, 21-year-old Hayato Baba needed to use the business's bathroom, only to find it occupied by the victim, an unidentified 37-year-old man. According to reports, the victim's allegedly long stay in the bathroom sent Baba into a rage, so much so that when he finally came out, Baba, well, lost his shit. After punching the 37-year-old in the face twice, he stole his wallet containing 110,000 yen, or about $820 in cash. When police were called to the scene, Baba was apparently still there, casually drinking outside the convenience store as if nothing had happened. Thankfully, the victim was okay, and only suffered minor injuries to his face. Under questioning, Baba explained that it was the victim's lengthy use of the bathroom that had set him off. He also claimed that he had not initially intended to rob the man, but that he took advantage of the situation when the victim's wallet fell out of his pocket during the attack. Baba was arrested on suspicion of assault and robbery, and currently remains in police custody. Authorities in the Thai capital of Bangkok say that they were stunned this week when they finally caught up with a wanted drug trafficker only to discover the insane lengths that he had gone to in order to avoid detection. According to reports, Sarahat Soanjung first caught the attention of the Royal Thai Police Force a couple of years ago, when he was first arrested for crimes related to the importation and sale of MDMA and ecstasy. However, over time, investigators say he became a much bigger player, ordering larger and larger quantities of these drugs via the dark web and paying for them with Bitcoin while facilitating a network of buyers and sellers in and around the Bangkok area. In November of last year, it seemed like Sarahat was finally busted for good when one of his illegal packages containing nearly 300 ecstasy pills and roughly 5 pounds of liquid MDMA was discovered by the country's customs officials. Reports seem to differ on what happened next, with some stating that he was able to escape from custody, while others suggest that police were never able to find him in the first place. Regardless, it was at that point that a warrant was put out for his arrest, and a serious operation to bring him down was put into action. According to local media, after several months, police were able to get an undercover officer in contact with Sarahat, who posed as a drug mule. The undercover officer agreed to sell and smuggle for Sarahat and managed to learn that he was still in Bangkok, but was planning to try and move to South Korea. Finally, this week, using information obtained by the officer, police were able to link Sarahat to a condo in Bangna district. However, when they raided the place, they were surprised by what they found. It turned out that Sarahat was now living under a completely different identity and looked vastly different to previous mugshots the police had of him. This was because he had had extensive plastic surgery with the goal of making himself look Korean. He was also going by a new name, Song Jimin. Apparently, the work Sarah had had done was pretty convincing, because multiple witnesses in the case had described him as a, quote, handsome Korean man during their investigation. Even police themselves told the media, quote, none of his original face was left. Unfortunately, all of the available pictures we could find of Sarahat have his eyes censored, though you can tell even from these that his appearance has changed significantly. Despite the elaborate change of appearance, though, ultimately, Sarahat was still placed under arrest on the outstanding drug charges. A police spokesman later called him, quote, 
one of the main causes of Bangkok's MDMA epidemic, and said he is a drug lord importing MDMA from Europe at just 25 years old. At the time of this recording, police say that they're continuing their investigation and that they believe there are more people involved in the operation who are currently in foreign countries. Authorities in the Peruvian city of Puno say that a 26-year-old delivery man is potentially in hot water this week after authorities caught him in dubious possession of a pretty surprising piece of anthropological history. According to reports, the incident began sometime recently when the delivery man in question, Julio Cesar Bermejo, was spotted acting drunk by police while out with his friends. The 26-year-old was questioned, and when authorities looked inside his cooler bag, they were shocked by what they found. It was a human skeleton. Well, more specifically, a well-preserved human skeleton that had been mummified and was believed to be 600 to 800 years old. In other words, before the arrival of Spanish colonists in South America. When authorities asked Bermejo how he came to be in possession of such an important piece of cultural history, he reportedly told quite the interesting and strange story. He said that he had gotten the mummy from his dad, who himself had bought it off of a police officer many years earlier. Bermejo went on to say that he had become attached to the mummy, who he had nicknamed Juanita, and who he felt was his, quote, spiritual girlfriend. He said that he usually kept Juanita in his bedroom so that he could look after her, and that he had only brought her out one last time before he was totally planning on giving her to a museum. It appears that police are skeptical of that last part, and say that Bermejo could be on the hook for crimes against the nation's cultural heritage. In the meantime, they had a bit of surprising news for the 26-year-old themselves. It turns out that Juanita is actually a Juan. That is to say, that the skeleton actually belonged to a man. He is believed to have lived several hundred years ago in the eastern region of the country, and likely died when he was at least 45 years old. At the time of this recording, there is no word on whether Bermejo is facing any formal charges. Remember that whole gross situation a couple years ago when people were filming themselves licking the contents of Bluebell ice cream containers, then putting them back on the shelf? Like all of these stupid online trends, it of course became particularly popular on TikTok, where it was known as the Ice Cream Challenge. Well, it seems that Japan is now dealing with their own disgusting viral trend, one which has been labeled Sushi Terrorism. It all started last month, when the viral video that set off the whole trend was filmed inside of a chain restaurant called Kura Sushi. Kura Sushi is what's known as a Kaiten Sushi or conveyor belt sushi restaurant. Even if you've never been to one, you've probably at least seen or heard of them before. If not, it's exactly what it sounds like. Basically, you sit down at a table and your orders are delivered to you by these little conveyor belts. It's pretty cool. What's not so cool is what happened on February 3rd, when the trio of suspects who allegedly set off the whole disgusting debacle filmed themselves doing unsanitary things to other people's food and communal items. In particular, one of them could be seen grabbing someone else's piece of sushi from a plate as it passes, shoving the whole thing in their mouth, and then drinking from and licking a communal soy sauce bottle before putting it back on the conveyor belt. As with anything like this that goes viral, unfortunately the incident quickly inspired copycats, and soon countless other videos began to emerge of people doing similar things at conveyor belt restaurants across the country. Examples ranged from people licking their fingers in touching people's passing food, to licking chopsticks, to sucking the rim of a teacup before putting it back on the shelf. Come to think of it, saliva was somehow involved in most of the so-called pranks. Of course, most normal people were rightfully disgusted by this, feeling equal parts grossed out and helpless. Because the thing about this kind of dining experience is that it only really works as long as some level of public trust can be extended. Once people started to see this, it had a real impact on sushi chains across the country, many of whom, like Kuda Sushi and Sushiro, saw their stock prices plummet. This week, though, Japanese authorities in the city of Nagoya announced that they had arrested the suspects allegedly responsible for the original incident. 
So far, it appears that only the man actually accused of licking the soy sauce bottle has been named, 21-year-old Ryoga Yoshino, though the two others have been identified as a 15-year-old girl and a 19-year-old man. It's unclear if the suspects have yet been formally charged, though some local news sources we came across speculated that they could be slapped with forcible obstruction of business. If so, they could be looking at up to three years in prison. As for the Kaiten Zushi restaurants themselves, they are now taking steps to try and mitigate the chances of something like this happening again. Some are now requiring customers to collect their own utensils and condiments, while Kuda Sushi is developing an alarm system with sensors and cameras that are supposed to detect if plates are tampered with. Sadly, some chains have decided to hang up the conveyor belt model for good, saying that they now believe the only way they can properly ensure their customers' safety is by bringing dishes to them directly. At the time of this recording, the situation is still developing. Authorities in the Scottish city of Glasgow say that a 45-year-old local man has been sentenced to prison time this week after he was embarrassingly caught trying to rob his own son at knife point late last year. Though news of the incident only broke this week, the crime itself reportedly took place on November 19, 2022, when the unidentified 17-year-old victim was at an ATM in Glasgow's Cranhill neighborhood. While using the machine to withdraw 10 pounds, he noticed a suspicious man wearing a hood and face covering nearby. However, by the time he turned to leave, it was too late. He had been pinned up against the wall, and a large kitchen knife was being held against his face. The attacker then said, quote, Give me it. Give me it now. While the 17-year-old was already shaken, he was even more stunned when after a couple of seconds, something clicked. He recognized the voice and eyes of the robber. It was his 45-year-old father. The teen then replied, quote, Are you serious? Do you know who this is? At first, the 45-year-old said that he didn't care who it was. However, when his son pulled down his father's disguise, he replied, quote, I'm sorry. I'm desperate. The teen then managed to flee, after which he told his grandmother what had happened and notified police. When initially questioned about the knife point robbery, the 45-year-old denied any involvement. However, he later admitted to what he had done, saying that when he initially approached the 17-year-old at the ATM, he had no idea it was his son. He subsequently pleaded guilty to charges of attempted robbery and possession of a knife in a public place. This week, the 45-year-old was sentenced to 26 months in prison. At the time of this recording, none of the names of those involved have been released to protect the identity of the teenage victim. Representatives from Spain's Guardia Civil Police Force announced the arrest of nearly two dozen people this week who they say were involved in a massive agricultural theft operation responsible for robbing farmers of more than 19 tons of olives. The investigation apparently began back in January, when authorities began to receive reports from farmers in the Las Vegas region, located just southeast of Madrid, that massive quantities of olives were being stolen. A total of six farms were allegedly hit in rapid succession, with the largest theft resulting in a loss of more than 18,500 pounds of olives at a single time. In February, police got their first lead when they were tipped off about five people carrying several hundred pounds of olives in broad daylight. When they were questioned, the group was not able to prove that they had acquired the fruit legally. Following this, authorities raided two facilities in the cities of Toledo and Guadalajara, where the stolen olives were allegedly being pressed into olive oil. Multiple tanks were seized at this time, containing roughly 1,500 gallons of the illegally produced oil. As investigators uncovered more, 21 people were reportedly arrested in connection with the scheme. As for why the olives were targeted in the first place, authorities say it likely has to do in large part with skyrocketing prices brought on by a severe drought last year. The drought greatly diminished the olive harvest in Spain, which is often single-handedly responsible for anywhere from 30 to over 50% of the entire world's olive supply. At the time of this recording, few other details are available about the case. 
Police have only so far said that the suspects range in age from 20 to 57 and are facing a variety of charges, including theft, fraud, and receiving stolen goods. Authorities in Western Australia say that a six-week manhunt has finally come to an end this week after a 49-year-old accused drug smuggler was busted by his craving for takeout food. According to reports, the incident began back on February 1st when emergency responders received a distress call from a trio of men after their boat capsized near Eclipse Island, roughly five miles off Western Australia's southern coast. Maritime rescue personnel were able to find the men floating in the ocean. They were wearing life jackets and clinging to a drink cooler. They were then brought to safety. Following the rescue, the incident was initially presented as a feel-good story. The men, later identified as 49-year-old Mate Stepanovich, 36-year-old Aristides Avlanitis, and 45-year-old Carl Whitburn, said that they were fishermen who had simply run into unexpected trouble in the ocean's unforgiving waters. The men were even praised by marine authorities for having the proper safety equipment on board their boat during the crisis. However, all of that changed just six days later, when a plastic package washed ashore in a town close to the rescue site. Inside were several tightly wrapped bundles of cocaine. A day later, the boat that the rescued men had been on was also found, along with another eight similar plastic packages. In all, police recovered 365 kilos, or about 805 pounds of cocaine. While Avlinitis and Whitburn were quickly arrested following the discovery, Stepanovich managed to flee. He spent the next six weeks successfully avoiding police. That was, until he got a hankering for takeout. According to reports, investigators were able to locate Stepanovich at the residence he was hiding out at in the Perth suburb of Byford this week after he ordered Uber Eats to the property under his real name. When authorities descended on the residence, they found the 49-year-old hiding in a secret compartment next to a hot tub on the back patio in possession of a loaded gun. Stepanovich was arrested and, along with his alleged accomplices, has now been charged with importing a commercial quantity of a border-controlled drug. Authorities in the Thai province of Trat say that a 69-year-old woman unexpectedly found herself in hot water this week after she accidentally sent a message to dozens of police officers implicating herself in illegal gambling. According to reports, the incident took place sometime on March 24th when the 69-year-old, identified only by the name Kin Khan, sent a picture through the messaging app Line. The picture was of a sheet of paper on which she had written her chosen numbers for an illegal lottery. While Kin Khan thought that she had sent the photo to a woman named Belle, who apparently runs the underground lottery in her area, unfortunately for her, she was mistaken. In reality, she had actually sent it to a group chat primarily consisting of members of the local police department. Though some people in the group tried to inform Kin Khan of her mistake, she allegedly never bothered to delete the message. Eventually, some of the officers called her in for questioning. Kin Khan reportedly admitted to trying to enter the underground lottery, though apparently claimed she never deleted her message because she couldn't find her phone. Unfortunately, local sources don't mention what kind of a penalty she could now be facing. As for why one would enter an underground lottery in the first place, it helps to understand that in Thailand, almost all gambling is illegal. The few exceptions, such as the government lottery, are apparently quite popular and do offer large prizes, though they are tightly regulated and tickets tend to be more expensive. The illegal underground lotteries, meanwhile, are seen as a cheaper alternative and are believed by many to offer better odds. Authorities in the Japanese city of Saitama say that a would-be robber ended up empty-handed this week after he tried to rob a local convenience store, only to apparently be outwitted by the store's clerk. According to reports, the incident took place shortly before 1 a.m. on April 6th when the unidentified suspect walked into a 7-Eleven in Saitama's Hizako neighborhood. 
After approaching the counter, the man brandished a hammer threateningly at the business's 56-year-old clerk. While the situation was shaping up to be a fairly ordinary, though likely nonetheless terrifying robbery, bizarrely, that's when things took a turn. After demanding money from the register, the suspect paused for a second and then asked, You've got money, right? Without missing a beat, the employee responded, We don't. Of course, this was a total lie, and all the suspect would have conceivably had to do was demand that the clerk open the register to confirm. I mean, it's a convenience store. Obviously, the employee needed to at least have change handy to give to customers. Unbelievably, though, the bluff worked, and the man simply gave up and walked off. I mean, I've heard of the pen being mightier than the sword, but two words beating a hammer? That's a new one. Anyway, at the time of this recording, it appears that police are still looking for the bumbling robber. If this incident was any indication of his criminal prowess, though, it likely won't be long before he's caught. Authorities in the Chinese province of Hunan say that a man has been sentenced to prison time this week following his conviction in a bizarre case where he intentionally scared his neighbor's chickens to death on more than one occasion. According to reports, the whole thing began last year with a feud between two neighbors in Hunan's Henyang County. The men had been identified by their last names only, which are Zong and Gu. Apparently, Zong started everything off by cutting down Gu's trees without permission last April. Evidently deciding that escalation was his only avenue of recourse, Gu responded by sneaking onto Zong's chicken farm twice in the middle of the night. Both times, he used a flashlight to startle the birds, causing them to panic and run into the corner of their coop out of fear. With hundreds of them trying to do this at the same time, it created a deadly situation for the birds. According to local media, more than 1,100 chickens were killed between the two premeditated scarings, costing Zong the equivalent of about $3,000 U.S. in estimated losses. On April 11th, a court ruled in favor of Zong over the bizarre situation, ordering Gu to pay him the equivalent of about $650 U.S. in damages. Gu will also serve six months in prison and one year of probation. It was mentioned that the sentence would have been harsher, but Gu apparently showed remorse over what had happened. Authorities in South Australia say that an alleged drunk driver is facing charges this week after he was apparently caught asleep at the wheel near the drive through of a fast food restaurant. The incident began at around 5.30 a.m. on April 20th, when the suspect, an unidentified 35-year-old man, was driving while intoxicated in the Adelaide suburb of Bolivar. Evidently in need of an early morning snack, the man decided to stop at a McDonald's location off of Port Wakefield Road, where he quickly caught the attention of staff. According to reports, it wasn't hard for them to tell that he was drunk. For starters, he reportedly got into the parking lot by driving his Holden utility vehicle straight off the road and over a patch of grass before crashing through a barbed wire fence. He continued on until he got to the drive through where witnesses allege he fell asleep at the wheel. That's when employees called police. By the time officers arrived, the man had reportedly woken up and was spotted driving again from the McDonald's into the adjacent parking lot of a gas station. It was here that police caught up with him, with some reports suggesting that he may have fallen asleep for a second time. The 35-year-old was subjected to a blood alcohol test, which apparently returned a result of .230, nearly five times the legal limit. His license was immediately suspended for 12 months, and his vehicle was impounded at the scene. Reports state that the man has also been charged with drunk driving and driving without due care. Authorities in Peru say that they are searching for a trio of bumbling thieves this week after they robbed a high-end shoe store, though only managed to make off with half of what they intended to steal. According to reports, the incident took place in the early morning hours of April 30th in the city of Huancayo. 
The suspects arrived at the store at around 2.30 a.m., and almost immediately, things didn't go as planned. First, the thieves couldn't get through the locks on the front door, so they were forced to leave and come back. A second attempt with new tools also failed. It was only after an hour of trial and error that the suspects were eventually successful. After finally making their way into the store, the thieves helped themselves to as much of the business's merchandise as they could fit into their vehicles. In all, police estimate that they took 220 shoes before fleeing the scene. The crime was discovered the next day by the 37-year-old owner, who arrived at her business to find that the place had been ransacked. Sadly, the equivalent of about 14,500 US dollars worth of products were missing. There was a notable catch though. Now, you may have noticed that before when we mentioned that 222 shoes were missing, we did not say 222 pairs of shoes. This was intentional. You see, the criminals had only managed to get away with 220 individual shoes, all of which were for right feet. It turned out that as a security measure, the business owner had separated the pairs of shoes and stored their corresponding left feet separately. So yeah, the suspects may have gotten away with the loot, but it sounds like they're going to have a hell of a time selling it off. At the time of this recording, police are still searching for the thieves. They hope that since the stolen merchandise will be hard to get rid of, that when they find those responsible, they will be able to recover most of it. Authorities in the Indonesian province of East Java say that a 56-year-old woman is facing potential charges this week in connection with an ongoing housing dispute in which she is accused of terrorizing her neighbors in truly gross fashion. According to the victim, identified only by the name Wiwik, it all started in 2017 when she and her family moved into their house in the city of Sidoarjo. Apparently, the family didn't exactly get a warm welcome. Almost immediately, they began to have problems with one of their new neighbors, a 56-year-old woman identified only by the name Mazria. Wewick says that almost immediately after moving in, Mazria began vandalizing and doing disgusting things to their property. She would dump garbage there, throw dirty water, and grossest of all, pour buckets of urine on their house. While Wewick was originally quick to complain to local authorities, and Mazria reportedly agreed to stop during a mediation arranged by village officials, apparently she never did. Wewick says that this has now been going on for six years, and she says that Mazria is still dumping urine on her house almost every day. However, it was only recently that she allegedly had a video camera installed and managed to catch her neighbor in the act. According to reports, Masria was brought in for questioning by police, where she allegedly explained the incredibly petty reason behind her disgusting behavior. Apparently, Wewick's house formerly belonged to one of her siblings, and she was hoping that by making the place undesirable, she would be able to get Wewick and her family to move so that she could buy it back at a cheap price. At the time of this recording, the case is still under investigation. Police say that the 56-year-old may soon face criminal charges. Authorities in the English county of Cambridgeshire say that a bumbling criminal has been sentenced to prison time this week after he left a vital piece of evidence behind at the scene of a robbery. The incident took place back on March 3rd when 38-year-old Patrick Muddyman walked into a co-op shop in the village of Brampton. After threatening staff and customers there, the 38-year-old demanded that employees hand over cash. According to reports, Muddyman was given some money in denominations of 5 and 10 pound notes, but reportedly became enraged when he was told by staff that they didn't have access to any larger bills. After demanding a pack of cigarettes as well, he ran off with just 120 pounds, or about $150 US, despite the attempts of two brave customers who tried to intervene and hold Moneyman until police could arrive. Fortunately, it turned out that it wasn't all that hard to identify the 38-year-old. In addition to the entire incident being captured on the store's surveillance cameras, Moneyman accidentally forgot his wallet at the crime scene. 
Inside was a provisional driver's license, which police used to identify him and track him down. According to reports, at the time of his arrest, Muddyman already had a lengthy criminal record. Sources state that he has 24 previous convictions for 36 offenses, including theft, violence, and of course, other robberies. This week, Muddyman was sentenced to six years in prison over the March robbery. He will reportedly face another three years of probation once he is released. Authorities in the tiny country of Vatican City say that a man has been arrested and is under medical evaluation this week after he breached security by ramming his vehicle through one of the city's entrances at a high rate of speed. According to reports, the suspect, an unidentified man in his 40s, had tried to get into the Vatican at least two times earlier that day on May 18th, though was turned away by Swiss guards. It's unclear what exactly he said during these interactions, though some reports allege that he was trying to speak with the Pope. Later that evening, at around 8 p.m., the man reportedly returned, only this time he was behind the wheel of a vehicle. Without warning, he allegedly accelerated towards one of the entrances, breaching Santa Ana Gate, as well as a second checkpoint near the back of St. Peter's Basilica. Officials say that guards fired at the suspect's vehicle, though were unable to stop him until he reached the San Damaso Courtyard, which is part of the Apostolic Palace, where previous popes lived and where Pope Francis still apparently holds official meetings. It was here that the suspect was finally arrested and taken to the Vatican's small jail. While little additional information is available about the crime at this time, authorities say that the man was, quote, experiencing a serious state of psychophysical alteration at the time it took place. He reportedly remains in custody, though is being evaluated by medical personnel. Authorities in the Taiwanese port city of Kaohsiung say that a foolish 47-year-old man did himself no favors this week after he was given a fine for drinking and driving, only to escalate things to criminal charges when he allegedly got behind the wheel again less than 24 hours later. According to reports, it all started on the morning of May 17th when the suspect, identified by the name Xiao, was pulled over by police while driving his scooter. A subsequent test revealed that he had a blood alcohol content of approximately 0.04%. This was technically over the country's legal limit of 0.03%, but still less than 0.05, the point at which it's considered a criminal offense. As a result, Xiao was later released after being issued a fine. Despite the close call, Xiao was apparently upset about the situation and continued drinking. After hammering back several more beers, the 47-year-old still couldn't get the fine off of his mind. However, at some point, he realized he couldn't seem to remember how much the officer had told him he was going to have to pay. He decided to solve his problem by hopping back on his scooter and driving down to the police station to find out. According to reports, it didn't take long for police to arrest Xiao for a second time. As he arrived at the station, several officers watched in disbelief as he drove on the wrong side of the road and the sidewalk before pulling right up to the front door. He also reeked of alcohol. When Xiao's blood alcohol content was tested this time, it came back as 0.13%, putting him solidly in the criminal range for drunk driving. He was promptly taken into custody and slapped with a series of charges, including drunk driving and endangering the public. Authorities in Japan's Hyogo Prefecture say that they recently arrested a 22-year-old man in connection with a bizarre case after he allegedly sent more than a dozen threatening communications to his former driving school, along with hundreds of origami cranes. According to reports, between October 27th of last year and April 9th of this year, the driving school in question in Kobe City received no less than 15 threatening letters from the suspect, as well as 1,500 origami cranes. The letters were apparently addressed to a 39-year-old employee of the company and had messages on them such as, Die! and Quit Your Job Now! It appears that the cranes were 
just paper cranes. Though many sources were quick to point out the irony, considering that they are most commonly recognized as a symbol of peace. In any case, the 22-year-old suspect was reportedly tracked down thanks to surveillance camera footage, after which police discovered he was a former student of the driving school. He had apparently failed to get his truck driver's license last year and blamed the school for their, quote, poor teaching style. Following the suspect's arrest on May 11th, police asked him what the deal was with the origami cranes. He reportedly replied that folding them helped to calm him down. It's unclear if he is yet facing formal charges. After news of the story broke, internet users in Japan had mixed reactions to the story. Some commented that the suspect's origami actually looked pretty good, while others wondered if all that time spent folding might have been put to better use if the man had simply practiced his driving. Authorities in Taiwan's Nantau County say that a police officer from an adjacent locality is under investigation for multiple charges this week following a recent road rage incident in which he was accused of deliberately driving another motorist off the road. It all started sometime on May 21st when police were called to the scene of a collision on a two-lane mountain road in Mingjiang Township. Their officers encountered two drivers, a 64-year-old man named Chang and an off-duty police officer from nearby Changhua County named Chie. While both vehicles had been damaged as a result of the crash, Chang's had obviously sustained the brunt of the impact, and he was also taken to a hospital to be treated for injuries to one of his hands. According to reports, Chie was quick to allege that the injured 64-year-old was the aggressor, he said that while he was driving, Chang had come from the opposite side, driving so close that he clipped one of the mirrors of his silver sedan. When he failed to stop, Chia said that he had turned around and followed Chang, but that the crash had been caused when the 64-year-old had slammed on the brakes. Chang, however, told a different story. He said that he had in fact stopped after the initial minor collision, though had fled after Chia approached his vehicle and began screaming at him. He said that he feared for his safety. Contrary to what the off-duty officer had said, Chang stated that Chia had chased him at a high rate of speed, hitting his vehicle repeatedly until he forced him to lose control on a curve. Investigators now say that video evidence has emerged backing up Chang's version of events. In the video, the two vehicles can be seen speeding around the curve at the scene of the accident, at which point Chia's sedan clips the back of Chang's car, sending it flying. The car dangerously rolls before coming to a stop, at which point Chia gets out of his vehicle and appears to aggressively approach the driver's side of Chang's crashed car. At the time of this recording, it appears that no formal charges have been filed, though Chang is reportedly under investigation for attempted murder injury, damage, and obstruction of freedom. He has been reassigned to other duties while the investigation continues. Authorities in the Indian state of Chahadasgar say that a government official is in a whole damn lot of trouble this week after he was accused of abusing his authority to drain a reservoir, wasting thousands of gallons of water in the process, all so that he could find his missing cell phone. According to reports, the incident began on May 28th when food inspector Rajesh Vishwas dropped his $1,200 Samsung phone into the large reservoir of the Kerkata Dam. It said that he lost his grip on the device while taking a selfie. When divers were unable to find the phone, which was arguably already a tremendous waste of resources, Vishwas apparently decided to up the ante even further by bringing a diesel pump to the dam. He then ordered workers at the site to drain water from the main reservoir into a nearby canal. This reportedly went on for several days, resulting in 440,000 gallons of water, or 2 million liters, being emptied out of the reservoir. When Vishwas finally found his phone, it was too waterlogged to be used anyway. When news of what Vishwas had done got around, though, his phone quickly became the least of his problems. Understandably, people were outraged by the flagrant waste of water, 
with many pointing out that the country is not in a position to be wasting the valuable resource, especially during the hot summer months when parts of India need to have special tankers of water trucked into certain localities as it is. Experts say Vishwas wasted enough water to irrigate six square kilometers of farmland. After being caught, the crooked civil servant tried to offer a number of bumbling explanations for his actions. First, he stated that there were sensitive government documents on his phone. Though I'm sure, as you can imagine, he had a tough time convincing people that this was true. I mean, I'm no expert on how things in India work, but I'm assuming that food inspectors aren't exactly trusted with high-level government secrets. Probably a good idea, too, since Raj here lost his phone while playing with it next to a giant f***ing tub of water. But I digress. When this excuse fell apart under further scrutiny, Vishwas tried to say that someone had told him that draining the water from the dam would actually be a great idea because it would help the farmers. Anyway, it appears that officials didn't buy this explanation either because Vishwas has since been suspended from his job on suspicion of abusing his authority pending an inquiry. It's unclear where the case will go from here, though some sources appear to believe that criminal charges could be on the table. Authorities in Taiwan say that a 28-year-old professional bodybuilder was facing numerous charges following a recent incident in which he appeared to lose his mind in a convenience store, trashing the place before getting into a fist fight with police. According to reports, the incident took place sometime near the end of May, when the suspect, a 28-year-old professional bodybuilder identified only by the name of Zhu, walked into a 7-Eleven convenience store in Taoyuan City. It's not clear exactly what happened, but what we do know is that things quickly spiraled out of control. In now viral footage of the incident, Zhu can be seen dressed in nothing but shorts and shoes, having allegedly just trashed part of the convenience store. In clips, he can be seen squatting and screaming in rage. When police arrived at the scene, things apparently got worse before they got better. Part of the video footage taken during the incident shows Zhu throwing punches and trying to fight the officers, who responded by pepper spraying him and striking him with their batons. Eventually, the 28-year-old was restrained and placed under arrest. Authorities say that he is now facing charges including causing injury, causing damage, and obstructing officials. As you might imagine, internet users had quite a lot to say about the incident when footage of Zhu's intense freakout started making the rounds on social media. Due to the amount of squatting and screaming he did, many were quick to draw comparisons to the popular anime Dragon Ball, while others called him Taiwan's version of the Incredible Hulk. I mean, it's easy to see why. I think we can all agree that you wouldn't like him when he's angry. As for what prompted the dramatic display, Nothing has been confirmed, though multiple people claiming to know Zhu have since come forward offering conflicting explanations. Some have said that the incident happened after the 28-year-old was caught cheating on his girlfriend, while others stated it occurred after a failed marriage proposal. The most bizarre explanation we came across by far, though, was that the incident was started after Zhu was told by employees at the 7-Eleven that they were out of his favorite Italian black pepper-flavored chicken breast dish. Some versions of the story go even further, suggesting that the 28-year-old attacked police after they tried to give him herb-flavored chicken as an alternative. If you ask us, this one definitely sounds a little too ridiculous to believe, though I suppose stranger things have happened. As for the many who chimed in online and accused Jew of suffering from roid rage, apparently he claims he's all-natural and belongs to the World Natural Bodybuilding Federation. Representatives from Taiwan's Tainan City Police Department say that a 32-year-old man was left with quite the embarrassing injury after he recently attempted to carry out a terrifying attack at a local business. According to reports, the incident began at around 1 p.m. on June 2nd when the suspect, identified as a 32-year-old man by the last name of Lin, traveled to a seafood store in the city's South District. Video surveillance taken from outside the business shows Lin pulling up in a silver Toyota Yaris before exiting the vehicle with a rifle. He then begins firing wildly at the front of the store. 
In an attempt to protect those inside, it appears that employees began closing the automated shutters on the business's doors and windows. Lin had fired at least 23 shots when suddenly another vehicle pulled up behind him. Unbeknownst to the 32-year-old, it was an unmarked police car with several officers inside. One of them quickly fired at Lin from the back seat. The bullet struck Lin in his right butt cheek, causing him to drop the weapon and crumple to the ground. He was taken into custody immediately afterwards. Thankfully, it appears no one else was injured. While it appears that little else has been released about the case at the current time, local media sources allege that police were able to show up to the scene so quickly because they had obtained information about the attack in advance. The motive behind the terrifying shooting remains unclear, though these same sources state that Lynn has previous convictions for drugs, theft, and assault. At the time of this recording, authorities say that the investigation continues. Representatives from Japan's Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department say that they are searching for the culprit or culprits behind a recent burglary after they discovered that the man they arrested in connection with the case had actually been hired to commit the crime on someone else's behalf. According to reports, the incident began roughly two months ago when the suspect, 35-year-old Masaki Omori, saw a posting on social media for a job promising a big payday. The description was vague, and when Amori inquired, he learned that the work wasn't exactly what he expected. The poster wanted him to break into a specific shop in Tokyo's famous Akihabara shopping hub. The store in question sold lots of different items, but the unknown person was only interested in one thing. He wanted Amori to steal their Pokemon cards. Though this was obviously illegal, Omori was apparently in no position to turn down the money. He had substantial gambling debts, and the poster promised him a sizable amount of cash once the job was completed. So it was that on April 11th, Omori reportedly flew from his home in Okinawa to Ibaraki Prefecture. From there, he rented a car, driving the rest of the way into Tokyo. The following morning, at around 5 a.m., he allegedly smashed his way into the Target business, making off with 1,500 Pokemon cards worth an estimated 1.15 million yen or about 8,100 U.S. dollars. After the burglary, Omori reportedly headed to a prearranged rendezvous spot where he handed over the loot to a person the poster had put him in contact with. He was told that he would receive his share of the profits at a different meetup point. However, when he arrived there, no one showed up. This week, Omori was arrested by Tokyo police following an investigation. That's when he revealed his side of the story, and investigators say that they are now trying to uncover the identity of the person or people responsible for setting up the crime. The case has brought renewed attention to an issue that has received a lot of media coverage in Japan as of late. That is, so-called dark part-time jobs, referred to locally as yami baito. Like in this case, these are most often promoted on social media where scammers and other criminal groups promise high pay for completing one-time high-risk and illegal jobs. Oftentimes, it's younger people and teenagers that these culprits are after who they view as being easier to allure with the promise of easy money and whom the justice system usually tends to treat with more leniency. Just last month, one such high-profile incident captured the attention of millions across the country when three men wearing masks brazenly robbed a luxury watch store in Tokyo's high-end Ginza Ward. The crime took place in broad daylight, with the men smashing their way into display cases with crowbars in full view of confused and terrified onlookers. Though the men reportedly made off with over $700,000 worth of watches, they and their getaway driver were arrested less than two miles away from the crime scene. All of them were between the ages of 16 and 19, and apparently only met each other right before the robbery. At the same time, the skyrocketing prices of Pokemon cards in Japan right now means that they've become an increasingly attractive target for these kinds of crimes. It remains to be seen exactly how authorities plan to combat this growing problem. Authorities on the Japanese island of Hokkaido say that they are investigating an equally perplexing and stomach-churning crime wave this week after a rash of thefts targeting quite the specific and peculiar item. 
According to reports, over the last couple of months, all across the city of Sapporo, urinal grates have been going missing from public washrooms. Yes, you heard that right. It's exactly what it sounds like. Someone, or theoretically a group of someones, have been stealing those little pieces of metal at the bottom of urinals. Dozens of them, in fact. According to police, in the last half of May alone, at least 16 different washrooms were hit, most of which were in Higashi Ward. As for why someone would want to steal something that's been pissed on hundreds, if not thousands of times, so far, it remains a mystery. You might think the obvious motive would be scrap metal, though apparently these things are only worth like $7 US when they're brand new, so I can't imagine they go for very much on the secondary market. Especially because of, you know, the whole piss thing. That being the case, authorities say that they believe vandalism or some kind of peculiar fetish are more likely the reason for the crimes. I don't know about you, but my money is definitely on the latter theory, as I can't imagine what kind of satisfaction a vandal would get out of removing a urinal grate. It doesn't really affect the function of the toilet that much, and like, what do you do with it afterwards? In my day, stealing street signs was pretty popular, but I mean, at least those looked kind of cool. Personally, I don't know if I want to live in a world where the kids are putting up used urinal grates on their bedroom walls, but I digress. Anyway, currently both the person responsible and their motive remains a mystery. In the meantime, police are asking members of the public to keep their eyes out for any suspicious activity. Authorities in Cambridgeshire, England, say that a hapless burglar has been sentenced to prison time this week after a tactic he ironically employed to avoid leaving behind clues at crime scenes ended up giving police the evidence that they needed to convict him. According to reports, between March 1st and May 22nd of this year, 40-year-old Ricky Thomas went on quite the crime spree, burglarizing a number of businesses in the village of Littleport. In each case, he would apparently steal anything he could get his hands on, though seemingly had a particular affinity for cigarettes and alcohol. However, during one of these burglaries in April at a McCall's convenience store, Thomas reportedly made a huge mistake. He had put a pair of socks on his hands to avoid leaving behind fingerprints, though evidently ended up taking one of them off while he was there. We know this because he left it behind at the scene. While authorities wouldn't end up catching Thomas for another month, when he also managed to get himself recorded on a store surveillance camera, it was this sock that would seal up the case. This was because police were able to obtain DNA from it, apparently linking him to multiple burglaries. Thomas ultimately pleaded guilty to two counts of burglary and 13 counts of theft, and this week was sentenced to one year and eight months in prison. Authorities in the English county of West Sussex say that a 43-year-old man has been arrested and charged this week following a brazen attempted burglary using a piece of construction equipment. According to reports, the incident began at around 2.15 a.m. on July 4th when police in the village of Barnham received a call about a JCB crane which had been stolen from a local construction site. Officers were sent to investigate, only to realize that the suspect identified only as a 43-year-old man, had driven the stolen piece of equipment to a nearby co-op grocery store where he was ramming his way through the front. Police say the man was planning to make off with an ATM inside the business. It was sort of like a highly illegal real-life crane game. Come to think of it, much like an arcade crane game, the 43-year-old ended up walking away empty-handed. That's where the similarities ended, though as instead of simply being disappointed by his lack of a stuffed animal prize, the suspect was arrested following a brief foot chase and charged with theft of a motor vehicle and criminal damage. At the time of this recording, he remains in custody. Authorities in the English county of Cheshire say that a 32-year-old man has been sentenced to prison time this week, following a terrifying incident in which he showed up at his ex-partner's home and wreaked havoc to the point that a riot squad had to be called in. According to reports, the situation unfolded in the early morning hours of March 21st of this year, 
when 32-year-old Paul Rutledge showed up outside the residence in question, which is where his ex-partner Sarah McPartland and their kids live. Upon arriving, Rutledge started banging on the front door of the home and shouting McPartland's name, trying to force his way inside. This was already illegal, as she had a restraining order against Rutledge preventing him from contacting her. However, things were about to get worse. Though Rutledge stopped banging on the door when McPartland showed him through a downstairs window that she was calling the police, the 32-year-old was far from deterred. Instead, before officers could arrive, he proceeded to climb up on the roof where he began ripping off tiles and attempting to break holes through with a knife. While Rutledge did not get into McPartland's residence, he did manage to break his way into the connected units of one of her neighbors. Once inside, he reportedly stole cash from the homeowner, laughing and saying, quote, I hope you have insurance, before going back onto the roof. By this time, police and riot gear had assembled, though were not immediately successful in forcing Rutledge to come down. Instead, he threw more roofing tiles at them, shouted obscene insults, and demanded that they buy him cigarettes and McDonald's. His ex and their children had to be escorted out of the home by officers who created a human shield. When the incident finally came to an end and Rutledge was arrested, a tractor reportedly had to be brought in to assist with cleaning up all the debris. During recent court proceedings, the defense argued that the 32-year-old had been in the middle of a cocaine bender at the time of the incident and that he has since shown remorse and a desire to reform his actions. Prosecutors pointed out, though, that this is hardly Rutledge's first rodeo, so to speak. The 32-year-old has convictions for at least 55 prior offenses. This week, Rutledge was sentenced to 40 months in prison after pleading guilty to charges including criminal damage, a fray, and breaching a restraining order. Authorities in the Indian state of Karnataka say that they have arrested and charged a young couple this week after police say they were part of a gang of criminals who faked an accident in order to hijack a truck full of produce. According to reports, the case began on July 8th when the victim, a farmer from Chitradurga district named Malesh, was driving his truck through the village of Chikajala. He was on his way to sell his crops, a load that consisted of 2.5 metric tons of tomatoes, when out of nowhere, he was intercepted by a group of strangers. After claiming that Malesh had bumped their car, they demanded that he pay them for damages. However, this was apparently just a ruse to distract the farmer. What they really wanted were his tomatoes. After being attacked and forced to transfer some money online, Malesh was pushed from the vehicle by the criminals, who promptly took off with the truck full of produce. Now, if you're wondering why anyone would want a truck full of tomatoes, you're not alone. We were a little confused, too. That was, until we started reading more about the ongoing extreme weather issues in India this season. A brutal combination of scorching heat waves and flash floods across the country have reportedly wreaked havoc on several different crops, but tomatoes have been hit especially hard. This has caused extreme shortages in many places, with even corporate giants like McDonald's announcing that they would no longer be serving them on their menu. In places where tomatoes are available, reports state that prices have skyrocketed more than 400%. In the most extreme cases, farmers and shops have apparently hired armed bodyguards to protect their crops. Perhaps unsurprisingly, therefore, police say that after the 2.5-ton heist, the gang of thieves took the tomatoes to a market in the neighboring state of Tamil Nadu where they sold them. Unfortunately for them, this was also their downfall, as it was here that they were captured by CCTV cameras, leading to their identification. So far, investigators say that they have arrested a married couple identified as 28-year-old Baksar and 26-year-old Sinduja in connection with the crime. They are now facing kidnapping and robbery charges, while authorities say that they are still searching for the couple's three accomplices. Authorities in Thailand's Loe province say that a man is facing attempted murder charges this week after he carried out a terrifying knife attack against a bank manager when he was informed that his account did not contain millions of dollars. 
According to reports, the whole thing began on the morning of July 24th, when the suspect, identified only as a 64-year-old man named Surasak, walked into a branch of the Bank of Agriculture and Agricultural Cooperatives. After asking to speak with the manager, he informed the man that he was there to make a withdrawal. The amount? One billion baht, or roughly thirty million dollars U.S. While this request would have no doubt raised eyebrows on its own, things got even stranger when Surasak handed over a notebook as proof that someone had transferred the funds to his account. When the manager looked at it, he quickly realized that it was not a bank book, it was just a regular notebook. Evidently deciding to at least go through the motions to humor the 64-year-old, the manager reportedly brought up the account information that they had for him on record. It turned out that his actual balance was the equivalent of about 99 cents. When Surasak was informed about this, uh, discrepancy, he did not take it well. He apparently refused to believe that he was not a multimillionaire and began screaming at the manager before being removed by a security guard. Unfortunately, a little while later, no one noticed when Surasak slipped back inside the bank. When he did, he made a beeline for the manager's office before attacking him with a knife. The manager suffered defensive wounds to his hands and needed to be hospitalized, though thankfully, security guards were able to intervene in time to save his life. At the time of this recording, Surasak remains in police custody and has been charged with attempted murder. According to some witnesses, he may have been suffering from some kind of mental health crisis at the time of the attack. Authorities in the Thai province of Cha Chung Sao say that they are on the hunt for a thief with a peculiar M.O. this week. After he allegedly robbed a local temple while naked, evidently believing he was invisible. According to reports, the situation began at around 3 a.m. one morning this week, when a 52-year-old monk named Chantapon was awoken from his sleep by strange noises at the Lem Thai Temple. He got up and was preparing to carry out his morning devotions when he caught a glimpse of something bizarre. It was a naked man holding a knife, who appeared to be walking with purpose. Because the man was armed, Chantapon decided not to approach him and instead continued to observe as the stranger picked something up before walking back out the way he came. It was only later that Chantapon and the other monks realized it was the temple's donation box that the man had taken. It's estimated that he might have gotten away with the equivalent of about 30 bucks US. Things only got stranger when the monks reviewed the surveillance video from the temple. In it, the suspect could be seen arriving and praying before removing all of his clothes. He then grabbed a knife from a shop inside the temple and headed inside. He later used the knife to pry open the donation box before putting his clothes back on and leaving. Based on the suspect's odd behavior and his complete lack of attempt to avoid the surveillance cameras, police say that they now suspect the man believed he was invisible. Only time will tell, though, as at the time of this recording, the thief remains at large. Authorities in the Japanese city of Sendai say that a 28-year-old man is facing charges this week after he was linked to a robbery several months ago in which he used a bizarre excuse to gain entry into the alleged victim's house. According to reports, the incident took place back on April 25th when the victim, an elderly woman living in the city's Izumi ward, received a knock at her door. When she answered, she was greeted by a man who pleaded with her to let him come inside. He allegedly told her that there was a snake on the loose. While it's unclear if the man claimed that the snake escaped and he was simply looking for it, or he had seen it and he was afraid, one thing would apparently soon become clear. He was the real snake, so to speak. Once inside the elderly woman's home, the man reportedly stole 3.5 million yen, or approximately $26,000 US in cash, and then fled the scene. After several months of investigation, police were able to use surveillance footage in the area to unmask the alleged thief thanks to his car. He has now been identified as a 28-year-old man named Shota Kono. Kono was recently arrested and charged in the case, though police now say that they are investigating whether he is responsible for at least eight similar crimes in the area. 
In all of these cases, a man also reportedly went to the victim's doors and gave different strange reasons as to why he needed to be let inside. So far, it appears that the 28-year-old has denied the charges against him. During an interview following his arrest, he reportedly told police, quote, I can't remember anything that happened four months ago. Authorities in Thailand's Chonburi province say that a 47-year-old man learned quite a painful lesson this week after he tried to carry out a vengeful attack on one of his neighbors and ended up getting a scorching dose of instant karma instead. The whole thing started recently when a 33-year-old woman named Siraporn lodged a formal complaint against her neighbor, 47-year-old Net Anantakal, in the fishing village of Bangsare. Siraporn filed the complaint because she was tired of Net's constant boat repairs, which were both loud and created unpleasant fumes, and he apparently refused to come to any sort of neighborly compromise. After being informed of the complaint, Nett allegedly did what any completely psychotic neighbor would do. He decided to get revenge by committing arson. After waiting until the sun went down, Nett reportedly grabbed a can of gasoline, then headed over to Sirapurn's house and climbed onto the roof. Once up there, he began splashing gasoline down onto the residence's second floor patio with the intention of starting a fire there. Unfortunately, Nett made the rather unwise choice to do all of this while drunk. I suppose that's not really a surprise given the decisions that led up to this point, but the long and the short of it is, this wasn't exactly a precision operation from the sounds of it. As a result, while getting a little splash happy with the gasoline, Nett didn't notice when he got some of it on himself. In fact, he didn't realize until it was far too late, by which point he was engulfed in flames. Though the 47-year-old managed to make it back to his house and extinguish himself, as you might imagine, it wasn't long before the reality of his injuries set in. He had sustained burns to his face, arms, and legs, and ended up calling the police himself when he could no longer stand the pain. While being transported to a local hospital, Nett reportedly confessed to everything that had happened, saying that he had done all of this because he was angry at Sitaporn. Luckily, firefighters were able to put out the rest of the fire at her residence before it got out of hand. At the time of this recording, Nett reportedly remains in the hospital and is expected to face arson charges. Authorities in the Republic of Ireland say that they were forced to intervene and keep order at dozens of ATMs across the country this week after a strange glitch affecting one of the nation's largest banks essentially allowed customers to take out free cash. According to reports, the incident began sometime on the afternoon of August 15th when an unspecified technical glitch started to affect customers of the Bank of Ireland. The issue apparently made many of the bank's online services inaccessible, though contactless purchases, card, and cash machine services appeared to still be working. However, as some soon realized, that wasn't 100% true. While cash machines were still spitting out money, the glitch had apparently affected their communications with customers' accounts. The result was that people were able to withdraw or transfer more money than they actually had in these accounts. As word began to spread about the glitch, people across the country reportedly began to flock to Bank of Ireland ATMs, lured by the potential of getting free money. Lines got so long in some places and people were in such a hurry to take advantage of the glitch that police had to be sent to cash machines in a number of highly populated areas to maintain order. According to local media, in at least one instance, they were allegedly forced to break up an assault related to the ATMs. Though the Bank of Ireland says that the glitch has since been fixed, no information appears to be available about what actually caused the hours-long situation. Bank officials also warned that the celebration will likely be short-lived for those who took part in the money madness, as they claim debits for the amounts they took out will soon be applied to their accounts. Still, it seems that many are holding out hope that the money they got will remain free. As one man interviewed by the Irish Times said while waiting in line at his local ATM, quote, I don't know if I'll get away with it, but it's worth a shot. Authorities in South Australia say that a 33-year-old man is facing charges this week following a bizarre and destructive rampage that they allege was completely unprovoked. 
According to local media, police were called just before 7 p.m. on August 16th with reports that a man was damaging vehicles and other property in the Adelaide suburb of Salisbury. Officers arrived to find the suspect walking around on the street near Park Terrace, dragging what later turned out to be a cash register by its power cord. The man was flinging the device around, smashing it into several vehicles nearby, some of which were occupied and moving. He was eventually taken into custody, though apparently not before spitting on officers. Witnesses now say that the strange incident began a short time earlier when the unidentified suspect was kicked out of a local KFC. He had apparently gotten frustrated after trying to pay with cash at one of the business's automated ordering machines and began pushing other customers. After being kicked out, the suspect reportedly walked across the street, pulling garbage bins into the middle of the road as he did so. He then headed into another restaurant called Fat Jesse's Pizza, where things escalated even further. According to staff, the man flew into a rage after simply being asked what he wanted on his pizza. After screaming, not ham, he apparently threw change and a call bell at employees before ripping the restaurant's entire cash register and computer system off of the front counter. It was these items, which he dragged behind him while leaving the business, that he allegedly used to smash vehicles while continuing his rampage out on the street. At least four vehicles were apparently damaged during the incident, including a police cruiser. The 33-year-old has now been charged with five counts of property damage, as well as theft and assault for spitting at police. At the time of this recording, neither the suspect's name nor his alleged motive have been released. Authorities in Finland's Ostrobothnia region say that a local man is facing prison time this week following a strange incident in which he allegedly put a large quantity of explosives in two vehicles belonging to his friend. According to local media, the incident began sometime on August 3rd when police were called to a residence in the village of Kalbi with reports of a possible explosive device. The caller said that he had been told by one of his friends that he had placed nearly 26 and a half pounds of dynamite in two cars on his property. When the bomb squad was called in, they confirmed the alarming find, forcing the evacuation of several nearby buildings. The dynamite was then safely recovered from the vehicles, along with detonators. Later that same day, police tracked down and arrested the friend who had supposedly left the explosives in the victim's cars. The man apparently admitted to what he had done, though bizarrely claimed that he had done it as a joke. It remains unclear exactly what the joke was supposed to be. While authorities say that they are satisfied that the suspect did not place the dynamite with terror-related intent, they are still considering charging the man allegedly responsible with explosives-related offenses. If convicted, he could be looking at up to two years in prison. At the time of this recording, neither man involved in the situation has been identified by name. Authorities in the Peruvian department of Loreto say that they are investigating and trying to calm fears amongst indigenous groups in parts of its remote Amazon jungle this week, following a spate of recent crimes and attacks that locals initially attributed to extraterrestrials. According to officials, for the last several weeks, they have been receiving numerous reports from the Ikitu people, an indigenous group that lives in the country's dense northern jungles, who say that they have been the victims of a sustained campaign of otherworldly attacks. In particular, the group says that they have been terrorized by seven-foot-tall floating menaces, who they say have been flying around their villages and wreaking havoc. These attackers have been described by many names. Los Pelacaras, or the face peelers of traditional Peruvian legends, as green goblins, akin to something from the Spider-Man films, or perhaps most commonly, simply as aliens. Locals claim that they have tried to fight the aliens themselves, but they appear to be impervious to bullets. Officials, however, say that there is a far more terrestrial explanation for what has been going on. After some investigation, they believe the so-called aliens are actually members of organized crime groups that are involved in illegal gold mining operations. While authorities say that these criminals are definitely human, they are of no less cause for concern. 
Many of them are said to be part of well-funded and powerful organizations, mostly from Brazil and Colombia, who have been illegally mining in the area around the Nene River Basin for years. The practice has been especially attractive for groups who see it as a legally safer alternative to drug trafficking, while still being equally as lucrative. The money made on these operations has apparently afforded criminals the ability to use the latest available technology in their never-ending search for gold. One of these technologies is apparently jetpacks, which officials believe are what is being mistaken by groups like the Ikitu for alien hardware. The situation gets even stranger, though. While it's thought that the jetpacks were originally used by illegal miners to scout for new gold deposits in the dense jungle, authorities now believe they're being put to a secondary use. They allege that the criminals are deliberately trying to use their technology to scare indigenous groups into staying near their villages so as not to interfere with their illegal mining. While the plot sounds like something cooked up for an ill-considered crossover episode between Black Mirror and Scooby-Doo, the situation on the ground for groups like the Akitu has understandably been quite terrifying. Over the past few weeks, they've apparently been subjected to numerous attacks on their villages. During one such incident at the end of July, one jetpack-wearing criminal allegedly tried to kidnap a 15-year-old girl. Thankfully, she managed to get away, though she reportedly sustained cuts to her neck and other injuries which required medical treatment. At the time of this recording, officials say that they are trying to help, but that it's difficult to send in large numbers of law enforcement due to how remote and inaccessible some of these areas of jungle are. At least for now, it remains to be seen where the situation will go from here. Officials in Zambia say that five Egyptian nationals and six of their own citizens are facing charges this week after a mysterious plane loaded with cash and fake gold was seized, a situation that led to a multi-layered and convoluted corruption investigation. According to reports, the whole thing started sometime on August 13th when the private plane in question arrived at the Kenneth Kwanda Airport in the Zambian capital of Lusaka. The aircraft had reportedly flown out of the Egyptian capital of Cairo and was carrying at least five Egyptian passengers as well as their pilot and crew. The situation started to get strange when, instead of disembarking from the plane, the Egyptian passengers and crew apparently waited on the tarmac. It was here that they were approached by a Zambian man who was carrying large bags of what appeared to be gold. The man allegedly did not go through the proper security channels and instead is believed to have bribed his way to the plane with cash. Once inside the plane, the Zambian man reportedly began selling the valuables he had brought with him. Eventually, the situation triggered a response from airport security who came to investigate. This is where things start to get loopy. According to reports, after arriving at the private plane, the security team stumbled across the illegal gold buying transaction, also discovering that the Egyptians had millions of dollars in cash as well as a large number of guns and ammunition inside. However, rather than making any arrests, the security officers allegedly accepted bribes from the Egyptians of up to $200,000 each. The freedom that this bought was apparently short-lived, though, as a second security team soon arrived and arrested everyone involved. Things got even stranger when it was revealed that the Egyptians were also being scammed. It turned out that the supposed gold the Zambian man was trying to sell them was actually mostly a mixture of copper, nickel, tin, and zinc. About 280 pounds of the counterfeit gold was recovered from the plane, in the form of 602 bars. Even more ridiculously, it seems that no one can be certain just how much money was aboard the plane at the time. Early reports stated that the Egyptians were carrying about $11 million in cash at the time of their arrests, while that number has since dwindled to about $5.7 million. This has led to allegations that the money was stolen by some of those that were supposed to be investigating. As for why the Egyptians were in Zambia trying to buy such a large amount of gold in the first place, no one appears to know. However, the most prominent theory is that the group were involved in money laundering and were trying to get their cash safely out of the country because they fear there is instability within Egypt's current political regime. This theory was backed by reports from an Egyptian journalist who identified at least three passengers on the plane as high-ranking military officials within the country. Following his reporting, that journalist, Karim Assad, was arrested without warning at his home in the middle of the night and was only released days later after sustained protests. Authorities reportedly never explained why Assad had been arrested in the first place. At the time of this recording, the whole thing remains a bizarre and intriguing mystery. So far, five Egyptians have been charged with smuggling and corrupt practices, while six Zambians are facing espionage charges. 
The situation is still developing. Authorities in the Swiss canton of Valais say that they are looking for the culprit or culprits behind quite an unusual heist this week. After thieves apparently traversed one of the country's most challenging climbing routes, all to rob a few hundred dollars from a donation box. According to reports, the incident began a few days ago when the donation box in question was found smashed open and empty at its usual spot along the Jamai Pass. The Jamai Pass is a high-altitude mountain route across the Bernese Alps that connects the village of Leukerbad in the south with the municipality of Kandersteg in the neighboring canton of Bern. While the pass is popular with tourists, many of whom reach the area by cable car, the actual climbing route that the donation box is on is apparently no joke. The route is classified as level 5, the most difficult, and is known as a via ferrata, meaning that climbers are required to ascend metal ladders and steps directly bolted into the vertical rock face of the mountain. The process requires constant clipping in and out of various safety lines and also requires climbers to traverse gorges on narrow steel cables. In addition to all of this, authorities say that the donation box is only part of the way into the journey. The box is at an altitude of 2,350 meters or 7,700 feet, but in order to actually get away with the money, the thieves would have needed to finish their ascent requiring them to climb another 600 meters, or roughly 2,000 feet. Police say that it's likely that the theft was planned in advance, since tools would have been required to actually get into the box. After all of this effort, it's believed those responsible made off with $560 US at the absolute most. Adding insult to injury is the fact that the money the thieves stole was supposed to go to maintaining the Jamai Pass climbing route itself. The protected route is looked after by a local climbing club, none of whose members apparently take any kind of salary for performing their duties. At the time of this recording, police say that they are hoping to solve the case, though the job won't be easy because many tourists came through the area in the days before the crime took place due to perfect climbing weather. However, there is one silver lining to report. After news broke that the donation box had been robbed, a local benefactor apparently reached out to the climbing club and sent them money to replace what was stolen. A young Australian couple say that they are lucky to have not been seriously injured or killed this week after they went on what was supposed to be a fun camping trip with friends, only to awake to a nightmarish ordeal. According to reports, the whole thing unfolded on the night of August 20th when 20-year-old Brock Momsilovich and his girlfriend Jetta Kinder stopped to camp out for the night with a couple of friends at the Cumberland River Holiday Park, just off of Great Ocean Road. The pair had driven to the site in their 4x4 SUV and had brought along a small trailer as well as a tent that attached to the whole setup as an annex. They went to sleep that night with Jetta set up in the tent with two dogs and Brock taking the small trailer. However, things allegedly took a terrifying turn when an opportunistic thief broke into their vehicle in the middle of the night. Still sound asleep, Brock and Jetta had no idea what was happening until it was too late. By that point, the vehicle was already moving, taking them along for the ride. While Brock was somewhat protected since he was inside the trailer, unfortunately the same could not be said for Jetta and the dogs. They were dragged more than 650 feet up the road while stuck in the tent, the fabric from which was quickly being eroded away by the friction from the road. They were finally freed when the canvas from the tent ripped. Jetta was left with cuts and scrapes to her arms and legs while the dogs ran off in fear. The terrifying situation didn't end for Brock until a few miles up the road, when the suspect drove into the town of Lorne before blowing out the clutch in the SUV. When the vehicle came to a stop, the man ran off with the keys, at which point Brock called 911. Thankfully, no one was seriously injured as a result of the incident, though it's easy to see how things could have turned out much worse. Brock and Jetta were also reunited with their dogs over the next couple of days, thanks to campers in the area who had spotted them and alerted police. On August 26th, authorities reportedly arrested the person responsible for the terrifying ordeal, who has only so far been identified as a 19-year-old man. He is now facing charges including two counts of reckless conduct endangering life, recklessly causing injury, theft of a motor vehicle, and driving whilst disqualified.
Authorities in China's Shanxi province say that two workers were recently arrested and are facing charges after they allegedly defaced one of the world's most famous historical monuments with a piece of heavy machinery in order to make a local construction job slightly easier. According to reports, the situation began on August 24th when officials in Yuyu County received reports that a local section of the Great Wall of China had been damaged under mysterious circumstances. When officials went to investigate, they discovered that a large hole had been torn in a section of the historic wall where there had previously only been a minor gap. It was clear that this wasn't due to natural causes either. After following a trail left behind by the destruction into a neighboring county, authorities apparently discovered what had actually happened. A pair of construction workers, identified as a 38-year-old man by the last name of Zheng and a 55-year-old woman by the last name of Wang, allegedly used an excavator to rip apart the damaged portion of the wall so that it was easier for them to pass through and get to a local job site. Needless to say, authorities were not impressed especially since representatives from the Shanxi Cultural Relics Bureau say that the damage the two workers caused is beyond repair. Adding further outrage was the fact that this particular section of the wall, known as Number 32 Great Wall, is one of the only surviving sections which dates back to the Ming Dynasty, between the years 1368 to 1644. According to reports, Zhang and Wang were both arrested and have each now been charged with destroying a cultural relic. At the current time, it's unclear what punishment they could be facing. Authorities in the English county of Somerset say that a 41-year-old man has pleaded guilty to a slew of charges this week, days after he allegedly went on an unhinged and dangerous vehicle rampage following a domestic dispute. According to reports, the situation began late in the afternoon on September 10th when 41-year-old Jeffrey Marshall and his partner Catherine Lamb got into a heated argument over text messages she found on his phone. The content of these messages is unclear, but what we do know is that the situation only got worse from here. So much so that Catherine fled the house, which she apparently owns, calling police and saying that she feared for her safety. Prior to this, Marshall had allegedly attacked her and smashed her phone in a fit of rage. By the time Avon and Somerset police arrived at the property in the village of Norton Fitzwarren, however, things had escalated even further. Marshall was now behind the wheel of a 1958 M35 U.S. military truck. Though officers tried to negotiate with Marshall, these attempts apparently fell on deaf ears. It was at this point that the 41-year-old began to go on a rampage. According to police, Marshall rammed the two-and-a-half metric ton truck into Lamb's home, causing serious structural damage to the property. He then proceeded to destroy her Range Rover before driving through a police barricade and fleeing the scene. On his way, he damaged four police cars and several other vehicles on the street. Authorities pursued Marshall until he drove onto a bridge that crosses the M5 motorway, at which point he got out of the truck and threatened to jump. It was only after further negotiations that he finally surrendered. Following his arrest, Marshall appeared in court this week where he pleaded guilty to 12 charges of criminal damage in connection with the strange and destructive incident. He also admitted to further charges of dangerous driving and assault by beating. The 41-year-old is due back for sentencing in mid-October, where prosecutors say he will face a minimum of 18 months in prison. Authorities in the Chinese province of Hubei say that a live streamer has had his account banned and has been slapped with a misdemeanor punishment this week after he was found to be using drones to harass and invade the privacy of women for the amusement of his social media followers. The live streamer in question, identified only by the last name Wang, was reportedly arrested sometime earlier this month after his online activities were brought to the attention of police. According to reports, Wang was using multiple drones that he owned to follow random women home in Chongyang County while streaming the footage to his social media account. 
During the streams, he apparently made derogatory comments about the women and spread rumors about them which he had invented. While following the women, Wang also made no attempt to hide their home addresses, exposing where they lived. The streams apparently attracted a large following, much to the concern of police and other horrified internet users who called for something to be done. After the story attracted viral attention in China, Wang was arrested and given a punishment of 10-day administrative detention for, quote, disturbing social order through provocative actions. His social media account was also banned. Authorities in the Indian capital territory of Delhi say that a local government worker found a novel use for one of his personal days recently when he allegedly took the day off so he could plan and carry out the murder of his boss. According to reports, it all started last month when the suspect, identified only by the name Anish, submitted a request for some time off at his job as an office clerk with Survey of India, the government's national surveying and mapping organization. The request was approved, with everyone likely assuming Anish just needed a little break. As it turned out, though, he wasn't exactly planning a spa day. Instead, when Anish's personal day rolled around on August 28th, police say that he spent the morning traveling to a local market where he purchased a 6 by 6 foot polyethylene sheet and shovel. A few hours later, he invited his boss, 42-year-old Mahesh Kumar, to his home, where he allegedly proceeded to beat him to death with a pipe wrench. He then buried Kumar in a shallow grave in his courtyard, which he covered with concrete. All of this was apparently uncovered on September 2nd, after Kumar was reported missing and authorities uncovered his remains on Anisha's property. He was arrested and currently remains in custody. According to local media, Anish planned and carried out the crime because his boss made advances towards his girlfriend and also owed him the equivalent of about $11,000 US, which he was allegedly refusing to pay. The situation is still under investigation. Officials in the Filipino capital region of Metro Manila say that an airport security worker is under investigation this week following a bizarre recent incident in which he allegedly robbed a traveler, then tried to cover up the crime by eating the evidence. According to reports, the whole thing went down on the morning of September 8th when the victim, a Chinese national identified only by the name Kai, was passing through a baggage check area at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport. While waiting for his belongings to come through, Kai apparently spotted a female security guard that seemed to be acting suspiciously. After checking his bags, she appeared to be holding something tightly in her left hand, which she then moved to one of her pant pockets. Concerned that something had happened, Kai immediately went through his things when he got them back. To his horror, he realized that three US $100 bills were now missing from his bags. Kai immediately informed other members of security what he believed had happened, but was apparently told that there was no evidence backing up what he was saying. The female security guard, meanwhile, denied that anything had happened. It wasn't until a few days later that Kai was finally vindicated when he received a call from additional security staff from the airport. They said that they had reviewed surveillance footage and had indeed found video suggesting that the female guard had stolen from him. There was just one problem. She had eaten the evidence. According to reports, the surveillance video shows the moments after Kai accused the female worker of stealing from him. In the footage, she can be seen looking nervous before her friend hands her a bottle of water and she walks away from the baggage check area. She then turns around, rolls up the bills, and puts them in her mouth before using the water to help her swallow them. What the security worker didn't realize was that when she had turned around, she had actually turned right in the direction of one of the airport's security cameras. While it seems like Kai probably won't be getting his money back, officials say that they are continuing their investigation into the female suspect and that she and any others involved will face the maximum charges possible. Authorities in the Australian state of New South Wales say that a 35-year-old man has avoided prison time this week. However, he will still need to pay back police for wasted resources after he faked his own kidnapping at the tail end of last year as part of a bizarre scheme to spend more time with his mistress. 
According to reports, the whole thing began on New Year's Eve of last year, when 35-year-old Paul Ayera left his home in the Wollongong suburb of Dapto, telling his wife that he, quote, needed to meet with his financial guy. In reality, though, Ayera was going to see his mistress. Realizing that he would need a more credible reason to miss celebrating the holiday with his wife than simply wanting to get a jump on next year's taxes, at some point that evening, Ayara reportedly came up with a truly mind-boggling plan. Just a few minutes before midnight, he sent a text message to his wife pretending to be a group of kidnappers. The message wrote, quote, Thank you for sending Paul to me. Now payback is a bitch. Bye-bye. We will keep him with us until the morning. When he gives us his bike, we call it Square. Understandably worried by this turn of events, Ayara's wife reportedly called police, who immediately began investigating. 200 hours worth of police work and roughly 25,000 taxpayer dollars later, authorities found Ayara driving around in a white van with his mistress in no danger at all. Though Ayara apparently tried to claim that he had been kidnapped by a group of, quote, unknown Middle Eastern men, an investigation showed that that was all made up. Ayara was arrested less than two weeks later and was charged with making false accusations with the intent to subject another person to investigation. After being convicted of the crime, Ayara was reportedly facing a sentence of up to seven years in prison. However, this week a judge decided to spare him jail time. Instead, the 35-year-old was given a three-year community correction order and was also ordered to pay more than $16,000 for the police resources that were wasted investigating his sham kidnapping. It was perhaps the magistrate in the case, Michael Ong, who summed up the situation best. In court, he called Ayara's actions abhorrent, saying they were, quote, motivated by the least compelling reason I have ever come across. Continuing with the theme of bizarre crimes featuring nudity, authorities in Japan say that a man is facing charges this week following a truly perplexing incident in which he allegedly drunkenly stole a scooter and helmet after purchasing a pair of underwear from a convenience store. According to reports, the whole thing started earlier this month on September 8th when the suspect, who has not been identified by name, walked into a convenience store on Ishigaki the largest island in the country's southernmost archipelago. It was around 4 o'clock in the morning, and immediately things got off to a strange start. The man was completely naked and proceeded to walk to the counter, purchase a single pair of underwear, and leave. After departing the convenience store, the suspect allegedly walked to a bicycle parking lot a couple hundred yards away, where he proceeded to steal a scooter and a helmet. He apparently rode this around for a while before returning to the convenience store half an hour later, dressed in nothing but the underwear he had purchased before. It was here that he was arrested, as in addition to stealing the scooter, he was found to have a blood alcohol level of four times the legal limit. Police say that the man was initially released the following morning, though was re-arrested on September 20th following a more in-depth investigation. He has now been charged with public nudity and theft, however reportedly denies committing both crimes, saying he doesn't remember because he was drunk. Honestly, this one left us with so many questions. Why was the man naked? How did he manage to hotwire a scooter if he was that drunk? And what was he doing for that half hour between convenience store visits? Arguably, the best question of all, though, came from a commenter on social media, who asked, where was he keeping his money before he bought the pair of underwear? Authorities in the Japanese city of Yokohama say that they are investigating an all-too-common crime with a bizarre twist this week after a man fell asleep while drunk during a night out, only to inadvertently record himself being the victim of a robbery. According to reports, the incident took place on the night of October 1st, when the unidentified male victim was out for a night of fun in Noge, one of Yokohama's popular nightlife districts. After having a few too many drinks, he decided it would be a good idea to start live-streaming on his phone, shortly after which he took to the streets and went for a bit of a stroll. 
Unfortunately for the man, after only a few minutes, it appears that the alcohol he had consumed started to catch up with him. He stopped for what he evidently thought was a short rest sitting up against an apartment building and promptly passed out. The camera on his phone, though, kept rolling. Understandably, the live stream didn't make for very exciting viewing. That was, until a man's hand could be seen reaching into the frame a short time later. The hand proceeded to go into a bag on the victim's stomach, pulling out his wallet before disappearing. Apparently unsatisfied with what he had taken, the thief returned about half an hour later, this time taking the victim's phone. It was at this point that things started to get pretty interesting, especially as the thief had no idea that all of this was being live-streamed. The stolen phone continued going as the culprit got into his car and began driving, during which time he proceeded to make a call to an accomplice on his own device. During the conversation, the thief could be heard bragging, quote, I just got a set with a mobile phone from a tuna, tuna likely being their term for a passed out drunk person. He went on to say, quote, it looks like there's a debit card or something, so I'll bring it over like usual since I heard we can find out the pin through the phone. I got about 20,000 yen the last time. It's not exactly clear when the thief finally clued into the fact that he was being live streamed. However, we do know it was after he met up with his accomplice at some sort of apartment or hotel room. The pair could be heard discussing how they used the victim's debit card at a convenience store and had made a purchase equivalent to about $130 US. At the time of this recording, it's not clear if police have yet tracked down the two people seen in the live stream video, though presumably this evidence will go a long way towards helping them to solve the case. Authorities in the English county of Herefordshire say that they are investigating quite the bizarre theft case this week after they say a group of suspects stole nearly three dozen portable toilets from a local racing venue. According to reports, the strange crime took place on October 15th at the Ludlow Autograss Club in the village of Pencombe. Sometime after the day's events had finished at the racetrack, police say that a group of unknown thieves showed up in a Ford Transit van and began loading the porta potties onto an attached trailer. Witnesses apparently observed this as it was taking place, but didn't say anything because they believed the thieves worked for the company that owned them. In all, the culprits apparently made off with 35 of the portable toilets, including two larger ones that were designed for people with disabilities. The crime wasn't noticed until later on when the 26-year-old son of the business owner who the toilets actually belonged to arrived at the scene and discovered that they were missing. It's estimated that the thieves likely would have had to make four to five trips to steal all of the nearly three dozen porta-potties, and it's believed that those responsible didn't even bother emptying them before taking them away. While the crime undoubtedly makes for an amusing headline due to the strangeness of it all, the victims say that they definitely aren't laughing. Neil Griffiths, who owns the company that the toilets belong to, Three Counties Toilet Hire, says it's been a serious blow to his family business. Not only do the 35 stolen toilets account for about a quarter of his total inventory, they had all been recently purchased and are said to be worth about £40,000 or about $49,000 US. All that said, it seems Griffiths is just as baffled as everyone else about the situation, saying to the media in an interview, quote, We are devastated. I mean, who on earth steals toilets? Police are now asking for members of the public who saw anything or who might have dash cam or surveillance footage from the area around the time of the crime to please come forward. The situation is still under investigation. Authorities in the Chinese province of Shandong say that they are investigating a stomach-churning crime this week following the release of a viral video that appears to show a worker peeing into ingredients at a factory belonging to one of the country's top beer brands. According to reports, the whole thing started on October 19th when a clip was posted to the Chinese social media site Weibo. In the footage, a man dressed in a work uniform and wearing a helmet can be seen climbing up and over the walls of some kind of industrial bin. Once inside, the man uh, relieves himself into the bin, which appears to be filled with grain. 
The location tag of the video clip reads, Sing Tao Beer No. 3 Factory. For those unaware, Sing Tao is the name of one of China's most popular beer brands and is its biggest exporter. Understandably, the gross footage quickly went viral, prompting the company and police to respond. Representatives from Sing Tao said that they immediately sent a team to seal off and dispose of the ingredients that had been pissed on and that they had not been made into beer. They also claimed that the person responsible for the stunt, as well as the person filming, were not direct employees of the company. Predictably, not everyone's minds were put at ease by this, particularly Sing Tao's shareholders. The company's stock price fell sharply after news of the pea beer broke, though since then things seemed to have stabilized a bit. Others on social media wondered if this was simply the first time the perpetrator's actions had been noticed. As for police, they say that they're still looking into everything and have yet to make any arrests. The situation is still developing. Authorities in the Argentine province of Buenos Aires announced an arrest in a rather bizarre theft case this week after a one-legged serial thief allegedly tried to burglarize a shoe store. According to reports, the incident took place sometime this week in the city of Mar del Plata, when the suspect, identified only as a 27-year-old man, smashed the front window of the store in question. He proceeded to take a single shoe because, uh, well, he only had one leg before fleeing the scene. As you might imagine, though, it wasn't the most speedy getaway, and police were quickly able to catch up to the 27-year-old and place him under arrest. At the time he was taken into custody, he was wearing the stolen shoe on his good leg. Police say that the man will now remain in custody ahead of his trial, owing largely to his previous record of similar crimes. He reportedly has prior convictions for attempted robbery, theft, attempted theft, theft aggravated by an attempted break-in, concealing stolen goods, as well as others. A 13-year-old Chinese boy may not be facing criminal charges this week, but he's likely in for the grounding of a century after police say he stole his father's taxi and took it on a 300-mile joyride with his friends. According to reports, the whole thing started on the evening of October 23rd, when the teen, identified only by the last name Pan, got into an argument with his parents. It's unclear what that argument was about. However, we do know what happened next. After waiting for his parents to fall asleep that night, Pan stole his dad's taxi and drove off. He took two friends with him, asking them if they, quote, wanted to go on an adventure. Though it seems that this adventure at first simply consisted of driving around their home city of Baoding, at some point, the teens got loftier ideas. They decided that they would try to drive all the way across the province to the neighboring province of Liaoning. Unfortunately for Pan, he and his friends were eventually stopped by police at a checkpoint in the city of Langfang, when police noticed that he was way too young to be driving. Officers, in turn, called Pan's parents, who informed them that their taxi had been stolen. While Pan definitely fell short of his joyride goal of making it across the province, according to reports, he managed to cover an impressive 300 miles before finally being stopped. By that point, police say he'd been driving continuously for 10 hours. Perhaps unsurprisingly, local media sources state that this wasn't the first time he'd taken the taxi without his parents' knowledge. Apparently, his dad never actually let him drive the car, but he had gradually learned how by watching him. While Pan wasn't charged over the stunt, I can't imagine his parents were super happy about the whole thing. Upon returning him home, police told the couple to monitor their son more closely to keep him from engaging in risky activities. Police in Northern Ireland say that they are trying to solve quite the bizarre agricultural caper this week after a thief or a group of thieves stole two valuable containers from a local farm. Containers which were apparently filled with bull semen. According to reports, the crime took place sometime between the afternoon of October 21st and October 23rd at a cattle farm in the village of Clogher. 
It's believed that the suspect or suspects were able to make off with two tanks of the bull semen after breaking into an outbuilding on the property. Police haven't commented on exactly how much semen was being held in the two tanks, other than to say it was, quote, a significant quantity. Incidentally, I'm not sure that I really want to know. All jokes aside, bull semen can be incredibly valuable, especially as it allows farmers to control the genetic lines of their livestock. Semen from prize-winning bulls has been known to sell for upwards of 2,000 pounds per container. Additionally, police say that there are concerns about the handling of the actual tanks used for the storage. The semen is stored by being cryogenically frozen, a process that involves the use of nitrous oxide. Generally, nitrous oxide is only supposed to be handled by trained and registered professionals. At the time of this recording, authorities are asking for anyone with information about the case to please come forward. In particular, police are looking for anyone who might have CCTV or dash cam footage taken in the area around the time of the crime. Authorities in the English county of Oxfordshire released a major update in a bizarre theft case this week, announcing that after more than four years, they are finally charging a group of men with the theft of a rather unconventional art piece from one of the country's most famous buildings. The whole thing began back in September of 2019, when a heist was carried out at Blenheim Palace. The English country mansion was famously the home of former British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. But that wasn't the only reason the story caught the attention of the public. No, that had more to do with what the thieves stole. An 18-carat, fully functional gold toilet. The toilet in question was part of an art exhibit at the historic building and had been created by Italian conceptual artist Maurizio Catalan. The piece was titled America, intended to be a satire about excessive wealth, and was originally showcased at the Guggenheim Museum in New York where visitors could actually book time to use it. Though many initially questioned whether the toilet theft was simply a prank back when it first happened in 2019, police had their doubts. They thought it was more likely that the toilet had been stolen for the gold that it was made out of, with the piece estimated to be worth around $6 million US. Whoever was responsible had also gone to great lengths. The toilet weighed about 220 pounds and was clearly lifted out of one of the mansion's windows. Because the toilet was connected to the building's plumbing, it reportedly caused significant damage from flooding. While a total of seven people were arrested following the toilet heist, it apparently took another four years of investigation for charges to be laid. Those charges finally came this week, when four men, identified as 39-year-old James Sheen, 38-year-old Michael Jones, 35-year-old Fred Doe, and 39-year-old Bora Guchuk, were all slapped with various charges, including burglary, conspiracy to transfer criminal property, and transferring criminal property. As for the golden toilet itself, authorities say that they have never been able to recover it. Police fear that it has long since been melted down for the gold that it was made out of. Authorities in Japan's Shizuoka Prefecture say that a local man was taken into custody this week following a bizarre incident in which he broke into a woman's home and carried out an oddly specific chore. According to reports, the whole thing began on October 30th when a 28-year-old woman in the town of Hamamatsu left her apartment for the day. While she was out, her 50-year-old neighbor allegedly came in through her unlocked front door and made a beeline for her dresser drawers. Now, I know what you're thinking. He wanted her underwear. Well, yes and no. The truth is actually a little stranger. Apparently, the man didn't steal the woman's unmentionables. He laundered them instead. The 28-year-old might never have known anything had happened, except the 50-year-old allegedly took the time to hang up the woman's lingerie on her clothesline when he was finished. Weirded out by the thought that someone had been in her apartment while she wasn't there, the woman went to police, though before they could even begin an investigation, they were visited by the 50-year-old suspect. He was apparently dragged there by another resident of the apartment building who explained everything that had happened. While the man admitted to going into the 28-year-old's house and doing laundry, unfortunately, it appears that he never actually offered an explanation as to why. 
He was arrested on trespassing charges, and police say that they are still trying to get to the bottom of the situation. A Chinese Good Samaritan reportedly found herself in quite the frustrating situation recently when she tried to help an elderly man who had been injured and was thanked for her efforts with false accusations and demands for money by him and his family. According to reports, the whole saga unfolded recently in the city of Tianjin when the woman was walking to work and spotted a man who appeared to be in trouble. The elderly man had apparently fallen in the middle of the street and looked as though he likely wasn't going to be able to get back up. Without hesitating, the woman ran to help the man, calling for emergency services at the same time. She accompanied him to the hospital and even paid for his medical bills, which totaled 3,000 yuan, or about $420 US. Rather than being thanked for what she had done, though, the woman was reportedly accused of causing the elderly man's injuries in the first place when his family arrived at the hospital. On top of the 3,000 yuan she had already paid for his treatment, the family demanded another 10,000 or $1,400 in compensation. The family claimed that there was no way the woman would have taken the man to the hospital or paid his bills if she wasn't responsible for what had happened. Completely stunned by this turn of events, the woman informed the family that she was a police officer and tried to explain that she did what she did because she viewed it as both her moral and professional duty. The family still didn't believe her, and to the woman's horror, the elderly man took their side. Fortunately, it turned out there was surveillance footage of what had happened, which showed that the man had indeed fallen over on his own. That's when the family apparently went silent and also reimbursed the policewoman for the medical bills. By this point, though, the woman was evidently no longer in a forgiving mood. She reportedly sued the family for intimidation and emotional damage and was awarded 40,000 yuan or about $5,600 when the case went to court. After the ruling, local media reports state she donated all of the money to charity. Representatives from the Hong Kong police force say that a UK man was freed from one set of restraints only to be put right back into another set this week after he was screwing around with some illegal handcuffs and accidentally got himself trapped. According to reports, the whole thing started around 2.50 a.m. on November 22nd when the man, identified as a 47-year-old UK citizen with Hong Kong residency, showed up at a fire station with his wife in the Wan Chai residential district. The man said that he had been going through some things at his house when he came across a pair of toy handcuffs which had been given to him by a friend a long time ago. He started playing around with them, only to find his hands trapped inside. While firefighters were able to free the man, they said that unfortunately, they also had to call the police. These were not toy handcuffs, they were the real deal, and they were definitely illegal to own in Hong Kong. When police arrived at the scene, the man soon found himself inside another pair of genuine handcuffs. If charged with possessing an offensive weapon, the man could reportedly be looking at a maximum sentence of two years in prison and a fine worth the equivalent of $640 US. Authorities in the Argentine province of Chubut say that they are investigating a bizarre theft and property destruction case this week after a man allegedly destroyed his friend's vehicle during the middle of a full-on meltdown, one which was apparently triggered by an argument over eggs. According to reports, the strange situation unfolded sometime on November 22nd when the alleged victim, Frederico Maximiliano Berardo, went to a car dealership in the city of Puerto Madryn owned by his friend, Moro Martinez. While it's unclear exactly how things got started, witnesses say that shortly after Berardo entered the business, an argument began between the two men. Things apparently escalated when Berardo threw a chair at Martinez, though he was apparently unhurt. The two both then ran from the building, at which point Martinez threw a rock that hit one of his own vehicles. With his rage evidently still growing, Martinez continued to follow Berardo back to his white truck. Once there, he began to repeatedly hit the vehicle with what appeared to be two metal bars. Shocked onlookers filmed part of the encounter as Martinez dented the truck's roof and doors and smashed the windshield and rear window. 
He also allegedly stole his friend's keys, as well as a backpack containing his cell phone, a jacket, and some personal documents. Finally, Martinez returned to his own vehicle that he had hit with the rock before, smashing it up with a large stick too, before leaving the scene. Barardo filed a police report shortly after the incident, during which he revealed the bizarre reason that had apparently started it all. He claimed that Martinez was angry because he wanted some of the eggs from his chickens. When Barardo explained that he couldn't give him any because they were in an incubator, Martinez allegedly flew off the handle. Hours later, Martinez reportedly showed up at the police station himself, filing a counterclaim against his friend. He insisted that Barardo was the one who had smashed up his vehicle, evidently unaware that bystanders had recorded footage of him damaging both vehicles. At the time of this recording, though, police say that they are investigating the situation further before moving forward with any charges. As if all of this weren't weird enough, this is actually the second violent chicken-related incident to make local news in the Argentine city this week. A few days after the truck-smashing egg argument, a man known locally as Pikachu allegedly shot at his neighbor's house with an air rifle and threatened to kill them because he said a rooster at the property was interfering with his sleep. The woman who owns the house that was targeted told the media that the rooster is an emotional support animal for her father, who recently suffered a stroke. Representatives from the Tokyo Metropolitan Police say that a trio of would-be thieves got more than they bargained for this week when they attempted to carry out a brazen smash-and-grab robbery, only to find themselves outmatched by an employee wielding a traditional Japanese weapon. The whole thing unfolded at around 6.40 p.m. on November 26th, when a pair of men on a motorbike pulled up to a business that sells jewelry and precious metals in the city's Ueno district. Without taking off their helmets, the men walked inside, where they proceeded to pull out crowbars and start smashing the shop's display cases, evidently with the intent of getting their hands on the store's valuables. Moments later, a third man pulled up on a second motorbike. Just like the other suspects, he also kept his helmet on and removed a crowbar from his jacket and headed for the entrance. Much to the man's surprise, though, he hadn't even made it through the doorway when his two accomplices ran into him. It turned out that they were desperately trying to get away from one of the business's employees, who was wielding a traditional Japanese weapon called a Sasumata. For those unfamiliar, a Sasumata is a type of pole arm that has a two-pronged fork at the end. While the one the employee was carrying was definitely a more modern style, the use of the defensive weapons reportedly dates back to the country's Edo period, which began in the 17th century. Its purpose apparently hasn't changed much either. Back then, it was also used to catch criminals. In video footage of this week's incident, the shop employee, who is wearing suspenders, can be seen chasing the three suspects out into the street. The suspects are seen momentarily hesitating as if they're going to try and run back to their motorbikes before appearing to realize that the reach of the pole arm is too great and that they're not getting them back. The employee gives the bikes a couple of whacks with the arm for good measure before running off after the men down the street. The suspects reportedly fled empty-handed. In the aftermath of the incident, orders for pole arms like the ones used by the employee have apparently surged across the country. An auto manufacturer that also makes the weapon says that the person in charge of taking orders has barely been able to get away from the phone. According to police, two of the would-be robbers, identified only as 18-year-old men, have since turned themselves in. Authorities say that they are still searching for the third suspect, but believe it'll only be a matter of time before he is identified thanks to ample surveillance footage around the crime scene and the fact that they have the man's motorbike. Witnesses also reported seeing the bikes in the area in the days prior, and it's now believed that the men may have cased the business before the attempted robbery. The situation is still developing. Before we wrap up, we'd like to take a second to give a huge shout out to everyone who has made it this far into the video. Seriously, thank you so much for watching. If you found today's upload interesting and informative, we'd be honored if you'd consider liking and subscribing, as well as hitting the notification bell and selecting all notifications to stay up to date with our latest releases. If you're looking for additional ways to help support the channel, we'd love to have you join us over on Patreon. Patrons get ad-free and early access.
content, as well as four additional stories per week for each of our Crimes of the Week and Crimes of the Week International videos. You can learn more at patreon.com slash crimezone, also find some of the fine folks whose names are currently on screen. All that being said, we understand that not everyone has the means to support financially, and that's totally okay. We appreciate every like, sub, share, and comment that you send our way. Once again, thanks so much everyone, and take care.